All right, guys. Well, good morning. Happy Wednesday. Good evening. Good afternoon, wherever you're at in the world. Welcome in. What's up, Lednor? What's up, Scorpy? Good morning, y'all. Per usual, I'm going to take a sip of uh, some nice coffee here. We're going to get started slowly into this uh, second map, Scandinavia. Man, that's hot. Okay. <laughs> so crazy thing is I've been reducing the amount of coffee I drink in a day. Kind of crazy. Um, usually I brew a whole pot. Me and my wife will share a whole pot in a day. And uh, we've been sharing a half. So this cup of coffee and maybe, maybe a second is going to be pretty much it. All right, let's get in here. Max, welcome in. Let's uh, let's get in here and roll out. We are going to essentially, we're not going to start right now with the tasks. I'm going to start with uh, some contracts that open up uh, certain warehouses. Not Not necessarily... Not necessarily. I think as long as I'm getting it. Um, so basically, yeah. But I mean, I, I get, I get chronic headaches anyways. Um, to be honest, I probably, yeah, I probably get like five, at least five days of the week. I have a headache at some point. It, it's kind of terrible, but it is what it is, man. You just gotta. How do I say this? It's life, you know? All right, so that's not gonna open up anything. Neither is that, but that is disrupting supplies. Disrupting supplies is, okay, so disrupting supplies. What's up, Scorpy? Welcome in. Yo, Hot Can, thank you for that follow as well. Um, So just trying to lead to places that open up warehouses real quick what kind of coffee um i actually ordered my coffee from hawaii um i was stationed in hawaii and i would get my coffee at the north shore on oahu at this little coffee shop and then uh they had like flavored coffees but uh i think hawaii is the only state in the union that actually grows coffee in the united states or can and yeah, ever since I, I went there, I haven't really, I just order my coffee from Hawaii. So it's, it's definitely a little bit more expensive, but, um, I don't really spend too much money to be honest. I haven't, I can't tell you the last time I bought clothes. Oh yes, I have Max. Yes, I have. It's just from, it's just from inj like military injuries and stuff like that. Okay, so wow, this is a lot, but but we're gonna. This is what we're gonna push to actually. First is gonna be recycling waste is gonna be the the push, but the first push is gonna be collecting waste. So so that's gonna be disruption of supplies. So this is gonna be the first push, and I believe. I'm trying to think where I get those from actually. Yeah, it's whole bean. It's whole bean coffee, and then I just I grind it up, and then I I just brew it. Yep, just grind it up and brew it. Deliver to the north section, south, northern area, southern area. Okay, so I don't know if I can even get these. Yeah, I don't even know if I can get these. I don't even know if there's anywhere to derive these from right now. Yo, Mr. Three Mill, welcome in. He chews it, spits it out. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Uh yeah, I don't I don't even know. I don't even think. I do need to do the southern bridge though, actually. So I, I should need to do this ASAP, to be quite honest, before I do anything. So we'll do Southern Bridge. I need to open this up. So metal beams and cement. We'll rock that out.
Okay. Let's uh go back to Where does where's he at? Did I, oh that's right, I, that's right, okay. Forgetting my place here. Yesterday we had some sketchy sketchy deliveries. Um but they were fun. Got them done. And then uh moving on. Well, sketchy deliveries with just logs, so. Actually, hold up. Let's move this out of the way. You're a coffee nerd? You always talk, you always gotta ask coffee questions? Yeah, you can see, um, so actually like all my sub badges are, are, co are types of coffee. Like different drinks of coffee, even though, I don't know, I kind of make fun of the, the people that have the different type of drinks of coffee. Usually I'm just, I'm a black coffee type of guy, to be honest. You love Snow Runner? <laughs> Glad you do, Trumpet. All right, let me turn my volume up here so I can actually hear. But yeah, um, the coffee I drink, it's, the flavor is actually called Hawaiian coffee cake. It's from this little brewery called the Green Green World Coffee Farms, and yeah, I order it by. Honestly, I'm surprised they haven't like given me some type of crazy discount because I've ordered from them for the last. Gosh, I, I'm probably gonna say seven years. I'm probably gonna say seven years. Yeah. Okay, metal beams. I'm, I'm just gonna go back to the first map. Go to the cement area. Long time drinker, man. Yes, sir. Hold on. I want to do something real quick. I want to check something. I feel disrupting supplies. Southern area. Okay. Yeah, it's here. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is after I unlock this, I'm gonna grab these uh these rail sections, drop one off here, hit the road, blaze up this oh no. Blaze up this road, drop it off here, and then yeah, we're gonna just start cracking away at getting these uh these warehouses updated or in business, and then we're just gonna move on to uh tasks and then use all the cargo from Warehouses and stuff like that to get these missions done. I never drank coffee until late 30s. I never required to have it. I was already a smoker and I didn't want two habits. The decolor of your teeth, yeah. Yeah, that's the only thing about coffee, man, is like you, you really have to uh, watch because it will, it will stain. Which has actually, I mean, if you if you like brush your teeth, maybe whiten sometimes. I mean, usually you're good, but honestly, I I never started drinking coffee. I'm gonna take my shoes off here because yeah, my wife will kill me if she knows I have my shoes on inside. Uh, I never started drinking coffee until cement here i know i gotta grab cement i'll grab cement right now it's actually a good place to do it i never started drinking coffee um like in high school i never really drank it you know uh even in college i never really drank it either i would drink it with my grandmother sometimes like sometimes um yeah i don't know I didn't really start drinking coffee until I was in my, gosh, until I went to the military, I think. Yeah, it wasn't until I got to like, I think it was when I got stationed in Hawaii. That's when I kind of started drinking coffee, I think like every day. That was pretty much it, yeah. Oh. Oh, that's right. Limited quantities here. Okay, I should have remembered that. That's fine. There's uh, there's cement on the other map. It's all good. Tiny little detour. What's my indoor temp? 
Um, my indoor temperature, I keep the house at 68 degrees. At nighttime, I keep it at 64. That's in the winter time. Um, summertime. Oh man, summertime. I set the AC to 76. And then at nighttime, I put it on 71. So yeah, not. In the winter time, I definitely leave it. But I'm also like my my office is in my basement. So we 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 took like the last two years refinishing our basement. So yeah, kind of like my little office slash. I don't want to say I don't want to say studio. <laughs> I guess like area that has my computer computer room. I guess office area is downstairs. So a little bit colder than upstairs. My feet get sweat won't my feet get sweaty? What if if my shoes are off? I usually take my shoes off to be honest. The only reason I keep my shoes on downstairs sometimes is because my feet get cold. Basically, it's like a gamer cave, yeah. No, my, my feet don't normally get sweaty, to be honest. Unless, uh, like, I go running or something, or I go walking. But my wife bought me a pair of, like, slippers because she's like, you cannot be wearing your shoes that are dirty. Like, you walk, you know, into stores, into men's restrooms, and then you walk into your house. Like, we clean the floors and stuff like that. Yeah, she's, she's definitely right there, but... So yeah, I have a pair of uh, like slippers and stuff like that, and I forgot to take off my shoes. So my, I literally just took off my shoes <laughs> down here. You always have wool socks on, yo. That's the thing. I have a pair of wool socks from uh, a Christmas gift. Actually, two pairs from a couple couple Christmases ago. And no joke, sometimes I would wear those on stream, and my feet would be so warm. It, it's crazy. Like wool is an amazing thing. I believe it still retains like its heat properties or its insulation properties when it's wet. If I'm if I'm not mistaken. Oh great. Okay, never mind. It's only a bunch of ones. We're good. All right, two metal beams, and then I grab two cement from the other map. We'll go in the the south gateway here. That'll pop us out the the north gateway, which should be pretty close or pretty pretty easy route to get to the other warehouse. We'll take all this stuff down, open up the bridge, grab both these rail sections for this mission here. Do the other mission for the what's it called the um warehouse and then we'll start the other chain for the other warehouse and then after that it's all tasks so kind of a different approach to what I normally do with tasks then contracts it just kind of makes sense to, to open things up and then utilize materials from warehouses that you have open your PC keeps your office pretty warm so this summer it will be rough Man, I, I remember that actually, like, my PC in 2022, in 2023, actually, a little bit in 2023, not much, actually, but, uh, I think I moved my PC down here, so I, I moved, I, I moved my stuff down here in probably the summer, last summer, yeah, last summer around, like, June, that's when I got my new desk, and, uh, I saved up for it, got it. And then uh, I moved my stuff down here after I finished the flooring down here and stuff like that. I finished the flooring in May. I finally moved my stuff down here in, I think, June or July. Um, then we finally got my lighting in, power, and stuff like that. that. That Running the power and the lighting down here was pretty tough. But after that, man, 
I mean, I do, I knew, I do know about the PC heating up in in an upstairs room. <laughs> I know about it. In the winter time, it was nice, but like, is it two metal beams? Yeah. Okay, let's go. Okay, so we're gonna hit the south gateway. That'll pop us out the north side of by the lake. We'll take the the road. Grab those other other two. But yeah, down here, man. I mean, I have my my computer basically. Well, my laptop actually. It's kind of kind of sad. I don't have a, an actual dedicated gaming PC slash content creation PC. But yeah, everything has been on the laptop for the past uh, four years. So one would think that uh, it gets pretty warm, but actually it doesn't. Have a lot of uh, a lot of things to keep it cool, but also the cool air down here helps. Still have a few projects, man. I I feel like I always have projects. Always have house projects, man. It's funny. It, it's just I think I would do more house projects if I had. You know, of course, it, it all it always boils down to cash, right? Cash on hand or, or what you can afford. And yeah. I would probably do some more things, but. I'm gonna have to take a picture of my setup down here. I actually just put on these like. I think I talked about this before, these like sound, not, not soundproofing panels, but it's like those little foam, those foam panels that like have like designs on them and stuff. I had this in my other setup in, in Arizona and they definitely help like dampen the, the echo sound because you know, I don't have carpet down here. It's like I have, I have the luxury vinyl flooring from, uh, from Home Depot. The it's called life proof. So I have that down right now. And then, uh, I have a carpet underneath my, my chair. And then, yeah, my, my futon as well, it's in here and stuff like that and some other stuff in my office. But yeah, just because the, the room is so big and uh, you just get a lot of echo sound. So you kind of need that to kind of absorb some of your, your voice. Time and money. Yeah, you'd rather rent an airplane? That'd be sweet. My priorities are skewed. So you fly then. I think you mentioned that before. Up here, to the fa no, to the factory, my man. So I think. I don't think I'm going to buy a new truck for this DLC here or for, for season 11 at all. I think I'm just going to save my money right now. And then whenever the new Azov comes out, I'll just buy that. And then we'll, because here's the thing, I can't really showcase the Azov prior to, how do I say this, season 13, because the Azov is going to come, the Azov Adam is going to arrive before, um, season 13 release so so yeah we'll probably buy it on hard mode just to play it show it off a little bit it's good it's always good to uh get some time in it before i start going to reviews right no we don't have season 13 pts yet i think that is i think that's slotted i think it's slotted for the end of the month i believe or I'm guessing end of the month or early April, and then I'm, I'm guessing the the release of season 13 is going to be somewhere around. Oh man, I don't even know. I'm guessing late May. <laughs> I'm guessing late May or mid May for for like season 13, like actual actual re release.
So what we had we had season twelve. What was it? Season twelve released when? Was it was it Jan was it January twenty eighth? When did season twelve drop? I need to go back and look. I don't know if it was February or it was the end of January. should check that actually I want to check that I'm gonna actually pause and I'm gonna check that all I have to do is just check my my YouTube the day the first day of season that I stream season uh, let's see let's see Season 12, February 1st. I think it was the 29th of January. Yeah, I think it was... I think it was... It was either February 1st. Yeah, I think it was either February 1st or January 28th or something like that. I don't think I would have posted it to the VOD to YouTube because of... The 24 hour restriction. So I think it was it was the 28th of, of January. It's crazy. You know what's crazy is? Is I actually don't, to be honest, thinking about that now, I, th I think the PTS is not going to last too long then. My guess is the PTS will be at the end of... Here's, here's what I think. I think the PTS is going to be end of... Uh, end of March. And then I think live server drop is end of April. That's like four, that's like almost four months between, between seasons, right? And then after that, it would be, I'm guessing the next, the next season would probably be around summertime or a little, probably late, late summer, uh, season 15 after that would be wow thank you <laughs> season 12 I'm guessing or season 15 I'm guessing is going to be oh man I'm probably I'm probably going to say maybe like December you know what I'm going to delete this trailer where's this at this thing is just here, and I don't even like it here. There. Don't even need it. So yeah, season season fifteen. I'm guessing around Christmas time. That would make sense to have a DLC release around Christmas time. I think it's absolutely a good marketing strategy. Christmas, everyone's uh, everyone's looking to buy stuff, right? Then that would probably slot season. I don't know. I'd slot season 16, which would be hopefully the last. I'm guessing is maybe like February to March. 
of 2025. Five years of SnowRunner. That is crazy. bridge here's the second bridge let's get this unlocked ourselves a bridge now. Sweet, now we go grab the materials for the uh, this little place here. Quality materials, proper preparations, fine work. It all speaks volumes to how reliable you are. Here's your pay. It's not too much cash actually, but it's fine. Uh, let's see here. It's this route here. It goes down through here to this warehouse. And we open this up. Disruption. Now, we start moving toward getting one of the warehouses, one of the two, open, so. This nighttime music is really good. It's like so chill. Yep, there's the plane. That'll be the last mission I do, actually. Service fair parts, nice. Okay, so for these, I'm pretty sure that. Can I even put these in my. So for these, I believe, um, I don't know, I think I might have to actually place these into the, the zone and then, and then take them, but we'll see, but it's fine, it'll work. Can I make it? Can I make it? Can I make it? Maybe. Alright, guarantee this is probably gonna fall out. So let's try to mess with this a little bit. Get it to like sit in here. Really? good I've got a big question which truck would you buy first on hard mode I've started all over I only scouted whole whole of Michigan 
Alaska, and now 20% of Cove. Wait, you didn't go to Tamir? Wait, my question is, you didn't you didn't go to Tamir? I'm learning towards I'm leaning towards selling most, if not all, the vehicles. Oh, don't do that. One good crane bed trailer. Six wheeler. I don't here's the thing, I don't think hot can. Um crane bed trailer is your best option for hauling cargo. I think you're actually doing a little bit more harm than than good. I would actually do a setup like this. Here's why. Um, I, I don't want to show you the article because I think it's diving in too much, but I've talked about this a lot. The, a semi-trailer actually gives you more grip into the surface uh, without adding too much uh, drag or too much resistance because you're just pulling more dead weight as a, as a hitch trailer, right? Yeah, you can only do five slots of cargo, but you can't overstack. Kind of like what you see me doing, right? So you, you can kind of get away with doing that most of the time. Um, I don't think you should sell any trucks from Michigan, to be honest. Um, I think they're all useful. I think if you just go to Tamir, here, here's why I asked you that, to go to Tamir. I think if you go to Tamir, you're going to find a lot of really good trucks that will carry you through, like Kola Peninsula. Okay, this is... Okay, cool. That's good. Nice. And also, you're going to find crucial... How do I say this? Here's another Here's another good point of uh, of why I think you should go to Tamir before... So I would actually pause Kola Peninsula in general. <clears throat> you can sell the Transtar if you want. Yeah, you can sell the Transtar. Um, here's why... So, I think just for upgrades, in hard mode, you absolutely need to do both, all three of these. So here's why. Look at the bulk of your upgrades are coming from these three maps. Actually, your most, most of your upgrades that are from Russian trucks, even that you find down the line, their upgrades are coming, or they're being shared from here. I would I would definitely go to, uh, to Tamir. What's up, SD1? Welcome in. Use both crane, bed, and trailer in crane semi according to the situation but yes crane semi is objectively a better option yeah i think uh i would say it probably let it matters a little less with a super with like a big heavy truck okay let's let's talk about this okay like here's here's a truck i think it doesn't this doesn't necessarily apply to as much is going to be something like i'm gonna say like a kenworth a 963 okay I, the kenworth is the second heaviest vehicle in the game okay it doesn't really struggle with grip at all okay so like pretty much you can put you know the crane sideboard bed and whatever cargo inside of it and the, the vehicle itself is going to weigh more than pretty much the four slots of cargo that you that you tow behind it right so that's that's kind of like what my thoughts are on that but uh i think if you have a lighter truck um, just for my opinion, mobility, weight transfer to your wheels, it's a, it's a good option just to have a, a semi, but yeah, SD one's right. It's situational. You haven't been there yet. You wanted to go to Cove to, to the Tuz as a scout replacement. Okay. So you wanted the Acteon as an, as a replacement. Hey, do we have any info on the Azov Adam? Is it going to be an off-road or heavy? I think it's going to be in heavy class. <clears throat> I think it's probably it's going to be a heavy class. It's probably going to be very versatile. It's going to have its own its own uh, type of add-ons. So here I can kind of show you what what the what the post was about. Let me see if I can find it again. I didn't really read too much into it because like I don't I don't like doing that a lot. If I, if that makes sense. Announcements. Let's see. No, 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 might be the community feed. They put it on. Let's see. Is it on the community feed? It might be on announcements. Hmm. 
Let me see if it was on. Here it is. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Display. Here's the Azov Atom. Oh, uh, did it pop up? What was that? Here we go. Okay, here's the Azov Atom. As you can see, it is. it legitimately looks like a... A 64131, right? If you take this top off, it looks, I don't want to say almost identical. It looks very similar. I don't, from, from looking at this, it looks like these are probably 50 inch tires, maybe. I, I don't see why they would give it 47 inch tires. I think people would just complain like crazy. However, I, I think it probably should have them. So it says the Azov Adam brings you the massive Azov 670963N. Atom, which this number should be in like like a three three thousand number or like a different. You know what I'm saying? There's already a six four one three one. Whatever. This heavy class truck comes with two unique add-ons filled with fitted with exclusively for its own unique long frame. Okay, so it's gonna have a very long frame. Gotcha. A huge three slot flatbed platform and a unique maintenance module that comes with or with a repair module and extra fuel tank. What an extra fuel tank looks like this on the back, I guess. So it could be a very, a very sweet, um, um, it could be a pretty awesome repair refuel truck. Actually, in addition, the Atom is built to let you take on any terrain as its stock version is equipped with always on differential lock, always on drive, always on all wheel drive from the get go. Okay. So easy mode truck, basically. So basically as of, as of ask, though it will not beat any speed and torque records. Okay. This right here means advanced special gearbox torque records. This means it's probably going to have the same engine as the, as of six, four, one, three, one, or a little bit better. Unless honestly, it depends. It depends. They might just give it its own exclusive engine. I think they should just give it let it share it with something else it's versatility is where it will truly shine so honestly like from this i'm thinking as of 64131 a little longer a longer basically a longer framed 64131 maybe with bigger tires we'll be coming to you this spring stay tuned runners yeah that's my that's my thoughts longer framed 64131 it's probably gonna yeah three slot Three slaughter, um, I'm guessing crane, hitch trailer type type vehicle. Depending on where its saddle placement is, I'll probably just use it as a, a saddle low. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, it's not going to be articulated like the FAM. I, I definitely know it's not going to be articulated. Steering wheel. Yeah, we don't want that. Yeah, you're welcome. I didn't really get to read that much actually when it first came out because I was like, oh, I, I just kind of already knew what it was kind of going to be, but it's it's always good to read, you know. It's always good to understand what they're what they're coming out with, and yeah. It's just hard to decide between available trucks. I think they're both KRS fifty eight, the Bandit. Azov 7 can do two to three bed crane trailer. Azov is way cheaper and sits higher on most tier lists. Okay, so like, let me ask you a question. What are you having trouble with? So like, here's another thing with the, the KRS Bandit is, I don't think the KRS Bandit is, is good with uh, crane, crane bed trailer. So the, the KRS Bandit struggles with balance, okay? So like, another thing is, the reason I use a, a a bed like this is I create angles. So if you can create angles with your bed and your truck, you actually create stability. So trucks that don't have good stability, you're actually gaining stability from just creating angles. And uh, so yeah, like very tippy trucks, if I put a low saddle on them and use the, use the bed as kind of like a a way to gain stability it's it actually works out really well but the azov 7 yeah you're talking about one of the better trucks in the game so 
as of six, basically. Yeah, I think you're right, SD. It's pretty much an Azov 64131. Yeah, the Azov 73210 is basically a super strong truck. Wait, do I have to... There we go. Okay, now the station should be able to handle and any incoming trains. Great job. The film studio will be happy with... The okay, sweet. But yeah, I think I think this, man. I, I, I really do think I would look into... Um, I would definitely, I understand that there's a lot of people who really enjoy, um, how do I say this saddle or, or, or the, the, the flatbed, right? Actually, let me see something delivered to the train warehouse or is a train warehouse there garbage is there. Okay. I still need. Where's the garbage at? Is the garbage on the other map? I almost think the garbage is on the other map. Oh no, it's not. It's here. Okay, cool. Gotcha. Okay, I need to go get this garbage. Especially after getting the active especially after getting the active suspension. That's deep into a more, yeah. It does take. It, it still is strong before that, yeah. You wish there were more manual unloading options, like that railway track missions. Yeah, I I do too. Those would be cool. But yeah, um, hot can. I think I think. Uh, honestly, man, I I would absolutely recommend driving saddle saddle low. I think saddle low is the probably the most beneficial way to play this game. It does look how do I say this? Driving saddle low looks daunting, but the but the, the maneuverability you, you can have with saddle low, the ability to to gain more balance, um, the weight transfer for grip, it, it's the upsides are are amazing. I think. I just want anything that can do crane bed trailer just for fun and convenience. I would gladly trade the Fleet Star, the CK 1500, and the Azov, etc., for the Azov, the KRS. Well, I mean, like if you have the cash, then do it. If that's if that's what you if that's what you want, then uh, yeah. Um, the only problem, the only problem with that is. Is your cash your cash is what holds you back from buying stuff in hard mode right so and then the next the next topic is how is your cash flow that's that's gonna be my question for you is, is how is your cash flow because anytime you sit you're selling a truck here's why i don't think you should sell a truck because you could repurpose that truck to be a fuel truck at some point you know what i'm saying a fleet star can be a fuel truck you know, some of those early Michigan trucks can be a fuel truck. I mean, to be honest, like I don't use many. I don't use many, uh, you know, KRS Bandits, Azovs, very much as like my main haulers anymore, just because the game is just not that hard after season one. But, but yeah, for the for like season one maps like Cola and stuff like that, like I yeah, you need you kind of need good machinery to kind of make it so you're not pulling your t your hair out which is definitely understandable but yeah the the question i have for you is like how was your cash flow going from michigan alaska then right into cola Uh, refuel. All right, so I'm gonna get this other other trash. Oh man, I almost want to go back through the gateway, but it's fine. I'm actually just going to. So when I drop this off, I can just zoom through this gateway, grab three metal beams, and then zoom back to to this area. So it's kind of kind of a quick a quick thing, I guess. But I don't want to go there first. I'm going to go this way. 
And then I can go back up through here and get this other trash. Yeah, it's like right here. There we go. Yeah, that's that's kind of what I was asking is why why skip Tamir? I think Tamir is one of the most you didn't skip it, just went to code for the Tuz. Okay, so you didn't skip it. Okay. Well, I could say this. If you went to Cove to get the the Tuz, I would make a little diversion there and grab the all-wheel drive upgrade for... Hmm. You can grab the all-wheel drive upgrade for two vehicles, actually. Probably the MH9500 and the Twin Steer. And you effectively got yourself... Two pretty strong trucks um, for Tamir. And then from there, you know, you're going to get yourself a free Tega very early on. It's not going to be upgraded right away because you're going to have to find all of its upgrades, which doesn't necessarily occur until pretty much all the way through the map, but it's still very highly usable in stock configuration. You're going to find a Step 310 Echo which is one of my faves. You're going to find a Dan. You're going to find two Tatrans. So one of those Tatrans you can just sell off. That's like 70 grand right there. I think they cost 140 stock. So you can sell off one of the Tatrans you find. I think one's on Rift. One is on... Uh, what is it? I think it's Zimnogorsk. So yeah, I mean, after that... Then, you know, if you're spamming contests, which uh, <laughs> I hate doing, which I don't do, I would rather just uh, use the fuel perks, I guess. But, I mean, there is a lot of money in, in contests. There's a ton of money in contests. So I definitely understand spamming them. They are kind of boring. But yeah, I mean, you have options. You're not, you're not totally restricted, is what I'm saying. You're not totally restricted. best trucks for that region I think well, it's what you got right now honestly Harry um, I'm not necessarily a person who's going to say like these are the best trucks for that region I think if if you had a truck that worked well in Alaska it's gonna work well in Tamir you know what I'm saying like if you had that's I guess that's what I'm because like it's a thing it's like there's there's not really a map like, most trucks that, that work good in one map, they work good in another. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, there's there's an exception. I think the, the exception I'm going to give, like, an example of was... The 64131, I think, stays relevant in every single map. But there's certain areas that it struggles. And I kind of feel I lean upon, a, like, a bigger 6x6 six six to crawl over rocks. Rather than... Rather than just using the 64131, do you know what I'm saying? Because it, it just doesn't have huge tires. That is the only only spot I think the 64131 kind of lacks, right? It's just the ability to crawl over rocks. Or big rocks. It does a good job. But aren't they five attempts? They are five attempts, yeah. I don't ever do five attempts. Sometimes I don't. Well, on a few of them I have. But usually I just do one. And yeah, honestly, man... I can tell you after 11 seasons of playing hard mode right now that I play the game almost like normal. Like, I still recover my trucks at the end. Like, I'm... I don't really worry too much about money at all. I know where I'm going. I just have to go down the, route, the road here. But yeah, I think... I can link you a video. Here, but I don't know. It could be too late, though. Well, how much how, how much cash here let's talk about this I'm gonna show you I'm gonna show you something this is this was made by a viewer um, it hasn't been updated but this is actually really good information it shows you the cash values um no they're five attempts they they upped it from three to five which I, I honestly I don't agree with I think they should just be one giving five attempts is is not making 
hard mode harder. It's actually making it easier. So, all right, so check this out here. Here is, this is only updated, I think, to Season 8. Let's see. Yeah, Season 8. Those are Sclades. Um, but yeah, if anybody wants to take this on and take this, uh, take this sheet and continue it and actually update it, I would, uh, I'd be grateful, but I'm not in the liberty of doing that. Okay, so you see, like, the, the, the totals, right? In the experience for, like, Michigan, right? So let's see if it can be ever see this. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. Okay, cool. So the totals here, you know, experience cash. And then you have this is just uh contracts. Here's tasks, 30,000 here. So then you go down to the bottom, right? So here's contests times five. Okay, so check this out. A hundred and thirty-seven thousand cash for spamming these contests five times and getting gold. All contests. That is about 60% of the value you get from doing all the contests. This is why I think doing contests is a cheat. This should be one time in my opinion, but that's just me. Anyways, I mean like from these totals, I didn't get anywhere near these totals. If you go back to my video on hard mode, I didn't get anywhere near these totals in, I think, I, any of these maps, to be quite honest. I just used um, the strat of using free fuel, so I wasn't spending money on fuel at all. And yeah, I mean, here we are. I mean, I was up over a million. I think I was at like a million, a million almost two in, in, in the more. And then, yeah, I'll, I'll buy trucks because, yeah just for fun content for, you know, viewers and stuff like that. If you guys want to see me buy a truck, I'll buy a truck. So now, you know, I'm at seven, 750,000, but I think you basically spend, or I spend around 50 to $75,000 in cash on gas every map. If I don't have free fuel. On this map, I haven't spent a dime because I have so much free fuel. So, but I, I basically banked all that free fuel from the first three maps in the game, Michigan, Alaska, Tamir, and I didn't have to pay for a dime of fuel until I got to Amor. Amor was the first map that I actually paid for fuel. At all. You're, you're going to have enough money. I think if you play it well... But yeah, I would go check out my video on uh, the hard mode tips. It, it's It'll open your eyes, actually. But I don't know. If you're a person, to me personally, I'll never spam contests for, for money. I, I don't care about it. Um, but yeah, I think I have a pretty good fleet. I'm not really struggling for anything. I'm not struggling for money. If I need to buy gas, I'll buy gas. I need to buy, I could probably buy like three, three trucks right now, any, any of which I choose, but that's the thing you, you acquire, you acquire free trucks as you go. And yeah, you can choose to sell them. You could choose to hold them. So like ta when you go to Tamir, like you'll have two Tatrans. There's no reason to have two Tatrans, right? In my opinion. So you could sell one and there's 70 K right there. Boom. 70k quick cash. Yeah, and ex exactly. SD1 makes a great a great point. In a game where you have a thousand hours of missions, why would you want to spam contests? So true. So true. Do you think they should put traffic in this game? I don't think so. If they did, the the game would be so bloated. The engine would just be bloated. It would be it'd be it'd be too intense. Too graphically intense. I think. 
just too much to add. I think it would be cool though. Or no, to be honest, Slapper, I, I kind of think it would be cool if there was other other trucking companies that uh, that were doing jobs or like bidding on jobs that you were bidding on. This is kind of something I, I think uh, like hard mode should have been. Okay, I'm gonna give you my little spiel. Oh nice, they spawned. I forgot about this. They spawned. Oh, this is great. Maybe wildlife. Actually, they have wildlife in uh in expeditions, yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. You saw the eagle. Yeah, the eagle in expeditions. That was crazy. But uh I think in my opinion hard mode would be would be great if uh you know, you were a rookie when you start out like a brand new like CDL truck driver and you have a couple companies that are hiring like low key companies and their fleet were basically, I don't know, whatever they have in their fleet and that's what you drove. Okay, that's what you had access to. You had access to their fleet and you would bid on contracts. You would bid on tasks to go like help people, right? And other companies would bid on those. And so you'd have to actually under like undershoot. But then again, like based upon how good you did the job, I don't know how they would they would figure out that metric. Like that would also factor into cu a customer signing with you, even if you didn't underbid them or not. So like you wouldn't always have to underbid someone like just because the quality of work you've done or the percentage that you've gotten done, I guess would kind of play into that too as well. So I think that'd be kind of cool. Then and then honestly, like you get hired by a different company. They have a different fleet of trucks, different mission, kind of stuff like that, right? I think that would be a really cool like role play hard mode scenario. But yeah, I don't think that would ever happen. <laughs> I think that'd be sick. Zombies would be cool. You always felt like a zombie apocalypse driving game, but without zombies. It kind of does, yeah. You choose to ignore most of the contests so that I have a reason to return, okay. Oh, so you just revisit, okay, I see. I don't think I do, but I... Your views are not the same anymore. That sounds like a pretty different game. I, th I just think it would be a cool element to add. I think it would be a cool element to add. Because, I mean, that's realistic, right? That's more of, like, people want realism. So, like, that's real. That's realism. Like, you don't... Unless you're super rich, you don't. You just don't own all these trucks. Like you, you're working for a company that owns these trucks that have contracts. They bid on contracts. They bid on, on jobs, and then they get them, and then they basically go out and do them. I'd be. I just thought that'd be pretty sweet, but that's just me. And then I think from the cash you earn. Yeah, maybe you could potentially buy like your own vehicles or buy like, I don't know, you wouldn't have like the crazy amount of fleet that you have now, but you would buy, you'd buy your own vehicle. So then you would have to pick strategically what vehicles you need to buy to kind of like supplement what your current company has, right? You'd love to get eaten alive by, by polar bears. <laughs> Isn't, isn't like Pacific Drive a, uh, how do I say this, like a survival driving game? I need to get some fuel over here, to be honest. I think I'm just running around right now and I, I need to have some type of some type of support vehicle over here <clears throat> in some of these areas.
warehouse is open now. So that warehouse is open. That means... I think it's here. I don't think it's here. Oh, it is here? Let's see. What, what's, what's in this warehouse then? Uh, hello? Oh, the cable car and cargo containers. Okay, cool. I think the other one is opens up this cargo area, to be honest. Or there might be something here. So I do have a scout fuel trailer there. Oh, that's right. I have this fuel carrier. I can just pull this up. So maybe I don't need much fuel here for now. Yeah, maybe I don't need too much right now. All right, next, next zone I want to do. I want to unlock something. No, it's not that. It's this. I think it's called recycling waste. So I have to do renewing the cycle and finishing touch. What's finishing touch? Grim background. Celebrity hour. Well, I could do this, the cable car mission. <laughs> But I want to do. I don't want to do that yet. Celebrity hour, movie star trailer to the wasteland. Okay. Okay. So, first off, let me see here. Renewing the cycle. Okay. Two cement service spare parts. Okay. So, cement's here. Service spare parts are here. Let's run it. I'll get fuel from that little trailer there. <clears throat> when I come down here, I'm gonna pull this this fuel carrier up to this road. Yeah, we'll do that. Grow there. Gotta get some of these contracts open, or these warehouses open, and then we'll start cracking away at these tasks. You know, I honestly would like to bring the least amount of trucks to this area <laughs> that I can. Just at the end. Oh gosh. Okay, never mind. Oh, never mind. Not paying attention. Bring in my uh repair truck. How many how much repairs do I have left on this? 500. That'll be good enough. A nice change difficulty wise after main the farming yeah yeah are there better track are there better tractors to make it faster yeah the, the k7m k7m is pretty good actually you know what let's go through it's the south gateway Yeah, the K7M is going to be pretty, pretty great. Um, it's turning radius is probably the most terrible thing ever, but. All right, let's go bring this down here. This doesn't have a whole lot of fuel in it, but it's OK. It doesn't need a whole lot. <clears throat> Yeah, the K7M, I, I think if you go back to my hard mode episodes on, on the K7M, I bought actually bought two of them. I got the free one, I bought two of them. And if you're around for the stream, something happens, there's a bug where if you winch any of the...
track the the farming trailers and then you hook up it just flips your vehicle in the air yeah i have, I have youtube shorts on it um i have a short video on it um so to stop that what i did was i just took i bought three tractors i hooked them up to their respective trailers i left them hooked up they just stayed hooked up to those trailers for the the duration of the whole map because what was happening was I was I was hooking up to different trailers and pulling them to different areas because that's kind of what you have to do, right? And driving to a different map and even hooking up on a brand new trailer, it literally was just flipping my truck in the air. Or if, if I would winch the trailer in any, at any point and then like I go hook up to it, it would just literally send me flying in the air. So, um, yeah. I would be wary of that. Um, so we'll refuel him. I'll put this trail, this vehicle like cent center ish. Wow. You know what? Scout fuel trailer. I'm gonna go get this real quick. Yeah, I'm gonna go get this real quick. Why is it? Oh. I'm going to go get this because this doesn't need to be down here. Yeah, this doesn't need to be down here. And I'll just pull it back to the road. Up here. And then I'll basically just sit this tr sit this right here. What's up, Victor? Welcome in. And then I'll just use that trailer to refill this, this tank. And that'll be my tanker. Welcome in, man. Good to see you. another thing I need to get some of these these fuel carriers in like strategic positions do some some logistical work yeah I don't know what what do you guys think do you think that new Azov looks like it has 47 inch tires I don't know these tires don't look too small maybe I'm honestly I'm guessing it has 50 I'm guessing it has 50 inches. First track you did, I did the funny jump to, it was my first time seeing it. Yeah, it was like, it was like flying, like. I'm not gonna have to worry about logging much anymore, which is nice. Hmm. Wait, where does this go? Where does this go? Give me a second. Generator to the tourist village. Um. No, I guess I'm not going to worry about this now. It's, it's it's super close. It's super close. That won't take long to go get anyways. You know, there was a comment. How do I say this? I don't know how, why I thought about this. I think I said the word, like, it's, it's something is super close. But this map is... Uh, is the maximum size right a map could be in the game and the funny thing is is a lot of people that that talk about expeditions they say that the maps are very small okay and, and i laugh because they're actually they're actually the same as like these maps like they're the largest that they can be and i just think it's funny <laughs> that someone would say that Actually, you know what? I'm gonna I'm just gonna fill this thing up. I don't even need to. There we go. Now I can just delete this thing. Delete, delete. Okay, let's go. Alright, now I have a full <laughs> a full tanker. I forget what that is. I'm not worried about it right now. I think it's like a zone I have to touch at some point. 
They feel small? Do they feel small? You know what I think they feel small is because they're... Hmm. I think they feel small because a lot of areas you're kind of shuttled into. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of those plateaus you're not... I don't say you're not meant to get up on, but like there's nothing... There's no like mission contract that's that's necessarily sending you up onto like the higher plateaus. Well, that's like in my my 20 hour experience. Like I'm not only talking about Arizona right now. You assume you move faster, and I don't have to stop so often. Maybe that's true. I don't know. You reckon the tutorial does such damage to initial perception of expeditions? That map is small, yeah. That's probably why people say it's small. So I think like some of the people that say it's small, they probably just played like little little Colorado. <laughs> and then they're just like, oh, it's it's super small. There's blah blah blah. But they're actually not small. <laughs> they're actually not small maps, but I don't know. Little Colorado is a super small map, though, because it's just a tutorial. But I mean, to be to be quite fair, like it does say it's a tutorial. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like the tutorial is not part of like the main game. I think, and I think that that's what got people kind of up in arms is that they looked at the tutorial, they probably played the tutorial, and then they're like, "Oh, this is exactly what everything is going to be like." But I don't know. Maybe they just should just done it like SnowRunner and implement a tutorial within like one of the base game maps. I don't know. Maybe that would have been a better move. I don't know. I'm just spitballing here. I'm just some random dude. So. You gave up on it? We're getting that far into the next map. I feel like a lot of people did give up on it really early. Alright, so this is where my, my, my tanker's gonna stay. I'm gonna pull him back. It's easier to just like back him up than to bring the Azov all the way down here and then try to turn him around with that hitch trailer. It's kind of has contact issues, so I'm just fine doing this. You'll come back when they approve the AI and bugs. What's up, Dave, by the way? Welcome in. All right, let's fix the, the truck that I just destroyed. Uh, Wait, what am I doing here? Wow, dude, I only have 300 left. Okay, never mind. I can, uh, I can re-up this, this trailer, though, because I have a repair supply place, like, very, very close, so we're good to go. No, what am I doing? SnowRunner helped you get rid of your WoW addiction? It's the best game I've I've played other than WoW since 2009. Oh wait wait wait. When did when did you stop playing WoW? Cuz I was also a WoW player. I will never play retail again though. Retail is just dying, man. There there's way too much going on. There is way too much going on. Like every every talent has like multiple different synergies and multiple different effects that that draw from two other different effects that draw from two other different effects and the list goes on also every class in the game almost feels like they have everything how do I say this? they save everything like I think back in like uh, Burning Crusade maybe early uh, let's say Burning Crusade early early and maybe even late Lich King, the classes were pretty well defined. But then it's just like every class gets everything. It doesn't even really matter. You're not even really playing a class, you're just playing something that can do whatever. You still play WoW? 
every week, but I started in 2009. I play casual PvP, pretty much everything, but now, after playing Star Wars, I play less and less. You don't feel you're missing out if I don't log in? Yeah. I feel, I don't know. I, I think even like the new sod, like Season of Discovery, I think it's, it's kind of breaking classes. I think Blizzard just went too far. It's like Blizzard, there's, there's a way they could have made like classic WoW, like vanilla WoW, a lot better. Cement, cement, without just like totally going overboard. And they totally went overboard. Like I was watching Zaryu and legitimately he's using, he, he like had like a, a raid. They, they raided Nomergon, which I guess like that's the new raid for, for level 40, which is kind of odd, right? Because yeah, I'm just used to regular vanilla hardcore. And I guess like <laughs> mages can heal now. So like he had all mages and then he just got himself a tank. And then he just basically like all the mages DPS and healed. So where you never play MMO during lockdowns, got into Elder Scrolls Online for social reasons. <laughs> You're mad at the responsible person. Dude, are you serious? Can I just not take damage from every, sing every, every single little pebble? I'm not hitting rocks. I understand smashing a boulder into the truck and taking damage, but come on now. Come on, come on. You're more of a retail player? Casual PvP has been fun for you always? Yeah, I just... I think... Who, who made a who made a video about, about WoW being too... Just too crazy now? What is retail in this context? Retail is like... How do I say this? Um, so there's different versions of, of WoW. Okay, so like they've been putting out like classic versions, which is like the old versions. So like WoW when it first came out is like called WoW Vanilla. Okay, that goes up to level 60. It has its own basically up to a certain patch. And then every basically every expansion is a different expansion. So retail is the the most updated expansion of the game. But Blizzard has, you know, started reviving old expansions like wrath of the lich king which is called classic wrath of the lich king now or like classic um you know just regular wow but like something that's gained traction is is like wow classic the original wow classic um hard mode which is kind of like something i talk about a lot which is just literally the the official release version of the game i think in like i don't know what was it 2004 or something like that um up into a certain patch but and then like now it gains so much traction like so the community made a a mod that was like a, a hard a hard mode or a hardcore mod where you know a solo cell found like you couldn't have more than one group per dungeon it, it all these different rules right it made it super hard to get the six to level 60 so it wasn't necessarily about just throwing your character at the game if you die you resurrect then you just keep going until you hit 60 and then you just raid um it was really about the journey and just staying alive so it changed it really changed the dynamic and uh it gained so much traction and so much like popularity that the developer actually created servers for hardcore they changed the rules though okay like you can do groups and stuff like that but basically if you die you're dead your character's done and yeah, I've I felt the effects of those a couple times. Uh, and then even, you know, they would even have raids. So like you would raid with, you know, 20 to 40 people. And yeah, if your character died, you were dead. Like even having like end game, you know, items and stuff like that that you would acquire. But, and, but now what happened was Blizzard went too far. So they're like, okay, you know what? We're going to make... Like we're gonna make classic hardcore vanilla, but we're going to change the classes and use abilities that were from like almost like retail patches in the past. And they totally just like they just messed up everything. To be honest, man, I think they just went too far. I think like for me, 
there would have been subtle changes they would they could have made to classes. Um, I think subtle changes, and then maybe adding like Mount Hygel, which was gonna be a thing before I think Burning Crusade came out, and stuff like that, man. Like just small changes to classes that just make sense for I I guess balancing purposes because like there's enough data to effectively balance some classes, right? But uh but yeah. Just a couple things and that's about it. Like them, how do I say this? Like them giving like in so in season of discovery they gave druids. All druids had the ability to call it was called I think wild strikes. Wild Strikes essentially made it so anybody within like a 40 yard radius would it would essentially have a 20% chance to proc an extra swing. Okay, which is which is essentially called Wind Fury for, for shamans. But shamans back in war, like vanilla WoW were only on horde. Okay? But now so like that was like the horde's like speciality was like if you had a shaman in your group, like a warrior or a rogue in your group loved you. Because yeah, 20% chance to proc an extra swing is is a lot of DPS. It's a lot of rage generation for like a warrior and such like that. I know I'm getting kind of like off the topic of SnowRunner here, but yeah, they gave that to, to the Alliance and the Alliance were always the better like raiders because they had paladins. But the thing is they didn't give any of like the paladins abilities to shamans that were on the horde side, which only shamans could be horde. So it kind of just, it just basically throws the balance off even farther. So like what made the horde like good or exclusive? Yeah. It was just bad. I'm sorry for turning this into a wow podcast. It's fine, man. Okay, I'm going to get this trailer actually. I'm going to bring this up so I actually have some fuel at this uh at this little point down here or at this bridge. Yeah, but that is my wow spiel. I will, uh, I will spare you guys <laughs> the rest of that. But man, I, I actually, when I started Solo Cell Found, I, I made it to level 56 with a Shaman. And then I died. I legitimately had a, uh, an epic item. An epic weapon, actually. <laughs> like, legitimately an epic weapon. And, yeah. I made a stupid mistake, and from one stupid mistake, it was it. Lost my character forever. It was kind of like the most sad story. Yeah, we're not going down in there. Oh, I guess we are. It's true. It's kind of true, yeah. I haven't played I haven't played it in a while, man. I kinda promised my wife I wouldn't play it for the time being. So I used to be pretty good at it though. I used to be pretty good. That's like my original background. My original background in video gaming is like is like wow. And then I moved on to like war gaming. Catch, thank you. But yeah, I don't know. I'm kind of like you. The, when I found SnowRunner, it's such a chill. It's a chill experience. It's uh, it's kind of re relaxing. You can just kind of like sit back in your chair, have a controller in your hand, drive some trucks. It's uh, relatively. Relaxing until it's not, though. Okay, so let's go like this. Go detach. 
You don't listen to, like, the game music? Like, you don't listen to the music in-game? That's the bomb. I have my music turned up right now. That's the most chill part, is, like, the music in this game. Let's see. What do I have my music turned to? 100%? 65 everything else? I almost want to even turn some of my sounds all, all the way down. Okay, cool. Let's go to recycling. Seventy percent of the time, you have other music playing. The main evening music. I need to pay attention to the evening music a little bit more. I haven't really tuned into like the e like because of the the tracks and the at night are just different, right? But I need to start paying attention a little bit more. The North Carolina music at night is pretty cool. So is this one too. Okay, sweet. The plant is working again. Recycle waste recycle is underway, and we are protecting the environment all the while producing some extra energy. Way to go! Here's your reward. Okay, cool. That is that's that. I need to still get to this, so I need finish finishing touch. Finishing touch needs a grim background. Are you serious? A grim background. A grim background needs celebrity hour. <laughs> Goodness, man. Celebrity Hour needs a mountain movie set. <laughs> Wait, hold on a second. I want to look at something. Do I do I need this? Do I need this warehouse? Because I feel like I, I want to do something different. I want to like make that last mission of pulling that trailer. Let's go. Metal beams, metal rolls are there. Okay, let's check something here. So that's metal beams, metal rolls in in this this plant. If I get this done, let's see what what all goes there. Not that. Not that. Not that. Nope. Not that either. One metal beam there. Okay. Basically, no metal beams. <laughs> no metal beams there. No metal beams. No metal beams. Two metal beams. Which I can just get from the other, other place. So, three metal beams in total. There's no reason for me to unlock this right now. There's just no reason. This is terrible. It's like a pointless. It's almost pointless to, to like rush this. There's only I only need three metal beams from this whole from this whole thing. So I'm gonna start cracking away at these, I guess. <laughs> Trip across the water. So here to there. No, not yet. Traffic accidents. The yar. The yar is here. I could probably pick up the yar, pick up this, take those both to those areas, I'm guessing, because I'm down here. That's pretty much, I think, what I'm going to do. Yeah. What's Lake Paradise? Visit. 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 Okay. Yo, what's up, TP? Welcome in. Yeah, there's no links allowed. Sorry, guys. All right, let's do this. I don't think I can put the yar inside this, this side of this bed. Trailers, delete. 
I doubt I can get him in in the bed, but we're gonna just uh I don't think I can get him in. I think he's too wide. I do think he's too wide. Let's look. Honestly, man, I'm gonna try it. Cause if I can get the load star into here, I'm kind of hopeful. No. Dude, are you serious? What is going on with you, dude? We need specialized truck classes. Okay, so what do you mean by that? Oh, this is heavy. Very, very heavy. Okay, so let's go like this. No, stay. This is not gonna fit. fit at all I just I, yeah it's fine we tried almost though almost I wonder if it it's crazy Whatever falls out, I'll just, uh, I'll just pull it. That sucks, though. Whatever. Alright. It's gonna fall. But I'll just winch it. Ah, uh, I don't want to go that way. I kind of don't, but I, I kind of have to, in a sense. It's alright. I'll, I'll just go get it. What's up, Eric? Welcome in. Yeah, it's gonna fall. I probably could have like sat it down in there, so it might have not fall. Actually, let's do that. Actually, never mind. It did. It did sit down. Okay, never mind. Good to go. What's up, Muff? No, welcome in. I'm doing okay, man. Just, uh... Making our way through. Making our way through. Good to see you. Welcome in, by the way. Alright, hopefully the VR stays in. <laughs> it's so weird, man. It's so weird I, I can get a, a... What's it called? A Lodestar in there. And I can't get a, a YAR. I guess the YAR is that much more wider. Or just a tad wider. A flat... If I had a flatbed... It would, it would pack, because, yeah, there's no sides. This will work. It doesn't fly out. No promises, though. So you wish the free vehicles didn't always come equipped with highway tires? I think that was that was purposed. So you have to spend money on them. Actually, there are some trucks that come with all-terrain tires, though, Max. 
yeah, there are some trucks that actually come with all-terrain tires when you buy them. Where they have them, maybe not equipped, but they have them, them unlocked and actually readily available. Pretty sure. You have a question for me. <clears throat> I just received a controller and I'm a bit confused. Does yours have an analog trigger buttons? And how do you use the throttle? Mine has like 0 to 100 percent. I'm not sure what you mean by that. An analog, analog trigger buttons. I don't know. So my steering mode is, is on steering wheel. My controller, my controller scheme is on B. <clears throat> That's really just it. That's really just it. You mean the ones you find on the map? So in hard mode, I could plan to use a truck I find in the field. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, I think they still do that strategically. Like you have to, they, they want you to, they don't want to just give you things to just, how do I say this, just to give you things. I know what you mean. But they basically want you, well, I mean, here's the thing. I mean, look at the, the ANK. The ANK comes with uh, off-road tires as soon as you roll up to it. So that, that is a truck that you actually can just straight up use as soon as you find it. Roll up to it, find it, take it, use it. I mean, not all trucks are like that. What's up, official? Welcome in. How do you use throttle? As when I press the trigger, then it's max. So my my trigger is pressure sensitive. I mean, I just, yeah. The step pike is all terrain, so is the P12, yeah. Same with the P512, yeah, the P512 has its its own tires on. Same thing with the P16. P16 has has its tires on them too. Don't fall out. Thank you. Okay, what's uh What's the, what's that's what I wanted to know. Yeah, I mean like your your controllers they usually are set up to be like pressure sensitive. Like I can get like this, like like right there, like I'm going really slow, like very light pressure. Now I'm full go. Oh, dude, you know what? I probably need to take this out. I need to take the yar out. Yeah, cat seven seven zero G. There's a lot. There's a lot of trucks, but. Oh, no, we don't want you to catch there. Maybe you bought the wrong controller. What controller did you buy? store pack trucks and then we just get out of here um let's see what's the best i'm gonna deliver not lost car i think it's called traffic accident we'll do this one first since i'm already like over staggered over this way <clears throat> yeah we'll just go here up here make the left this way um yeah And after that, we'll just basically roll through. Yeah, roll through, and then I think the other one goes here. You probably did a Nintendo Pro, Pro controller because the triggers are buttons. It's a Switch controller. I have, haven't read much about 
Honestly, man, I would just get either a Xbox or a PS controller. Whichever one you like better. Whichever one you like better. They will work. I've been using the, the PS4 controller. This is my second one though, because my other one kind of like crapped the bed. So. But uh yeah, they've been they've been working very well. Have no complaints. I think the only thing that, that could happen with the PS4 controller or a controller in general is uh your trigger strength might die and you might not be pushing like 100% throttle. But that never that, that never happened with my other controller. Like I still got 100% throttle all the time. Um so that you know, thousands of hours it's it still was present. It, it was okay. Come on, Yar. Good plan. There we go. I mean, the only thing that died really was the connection point. The connection point on the controller kind of, uh, yeah, it started crapping the bed. So that's when I had to get a new one. Have a Logitech controller, the one they used in that submarine that imploded. Yikes. This full screen, but it's not. There we go. <clears throat> Sorry about that, y'all. You destroyed a PS5 controller? With static shock? Ow. I've never heard that before. Good thing I have a PS4 controller. Actually, I wonder how it is to play on PS... Actually, you know what? I'm just gonna go through the mud. <laughs> i just go through the mud, I guess. It destroyed the square button? You got a new one for free? Wow. I mean, I am so glad I'm not still, like, confused with the controls from Expeditions to this game. I'm so glad. Take this wide, because I know I'm going to, like, smack this rock here. So, I think the triggers are press pressure sensitive. I can't tell you that the buttons are pressure, sensi pressure sensitive. I don't think buttons on 
on uh, on console controllers are pressure sensitive. I mean, they actually might be for certain games, but not for SnowRunner. Except for the triggers. Like left trigger, right trigger. Okay, so... Nice. We continue. Nice, I'm going to try enjoy a few days off of the river while repairing my car. Here's a little something for your help. Alright, just chill for a second. Let's, uh, I think it's called the Lost Car. No, not that. It's called Trip Across the Water. There we go. I'm going to delete this trailer as I go by. What is the element of water? Service spare parts. Ooh. Are these here? Oh, I missed these. I probably can go back and get these actually and just do this now. I might turn around. Yeah, I'm gonna turn around. Cause I, I can see one right here. Yeah, I'm gonna do this. I guess I'm gonna do this now. I don't know where this other one is. I think they're, they should be on either. There's one. There's two. I think the other one's like here. Yeah. Okay, cool. I just need to grab this one. So yeah, here it is. So we'll go back and grab that. I think I have gas. Yeah, I should have gas for this. Wait. Yeah, I have gas. <laughs> I'll steal some from the Tuz. Really? Okay. Okay. Lots of people down here camping. Looks pretty sweet. Nice little spot. It's probably pretty cold though. Is there a way, any way to assign a change suspension mode to a key press? I don't know. Don't know. I wouldn't know, honestly. That's that's for someone else to answer. Hmm. I might cut through. No. Are you serious? I'm trying to make do, do something cute here. Can I just get through? Yes. reach him from here. Let's see. Let's see if I can extend. There's no way. No way. I'm gonna have to cross, but it's fine. It's fine. I can just go and turn around. No. There you go.
up the damage. There we go. All right, cool. Detach. All right, um, well, it's like this, it's like this, right turn, pull a winch. See if I can get myself some, some balance here. And boom. Okay, cool. Wow. <sighs> Alright. That is, um... That is how you stop yourself from tipping. But that is also how you tip yourself over very easily. Is, uh... You actually have no angles <laughs> on your truck and trailer giving you balance. And then you have a top heavy load. Or I think I actually probably hit a... Hit a, hit a stone there, so... Yeah, that's a, it's a good way to stop your tip, and it's a good way to tip right there, so. back in And we're off. All right, crisis averted. I didn't have to save myself. That's good. Yeah, if you're tipping over to your right side, just spam your deployment of your, um, if you spam the deployment of your crane when you're tipping over, even if you lose your engine, your crane will fully deploy if you hit the deployment button when your engine is still on. So what happened is, in that case, my engine was off, my crane was deploying, and then it basically like kicked me back over to where I could turn back on the engine, I believe. So something about the American crane is it deploys faster than the Russian crane. However, it'll still do the same effect. So if you deploy your Russian crane, um, essentially when you still when you're tipping, but you still have your you still have your engine. Yeah, you'll be you'll be good to go. 
Sweet. I think. What's it called? Lake. No, not Lake Paradise. I think Element of Water. Okay, so wait. One is here. I got the one that's there. So there's four spare parts. Okay, there's two. Three. Where's the other one at? Four. Okay. One, two, three. Okay, cool. Yeah, we're good. We're good, we're good. We are good to go. I'm gonna delete this trailer. I don't need it. I don't know if I'm gonna bring another truck to do stuff with it, so just use one pretty much and just move it. So I'll just get rid of this now. Why can't I lift you up? Are we serious right now? Okay. Oh, there was something stuck on it, I guess. Alright. Cross the river. I still have gas from the Tuz I can use, so... Yeah, we'll be alright. down is this okay so I can actually come up here then he's there to bring Dak down again he's there and then to the location or the Tuz to the location and then drop off the other one at the train station so three missions yeah one pool I like it Twenty-seven gallons. Got to do it in twenty-seven gallons. point right now I don't really have a good entry point but I think I can just go down go down there and then just blaze right up through the through the trees I think but yeah we'll go this way
Fenroth. What? That's not unbreakable tree? Okay. News to me. Well, I guess we'll just we'll do we'll make do. Oh yikes, I need to actually go this way. Rocks, rocks, rocks. Actually hold up. Make this turn without my trailer just jacking itself up. Oh uh, yeah, nice. Classic horn. <laughs> it is a very regular horn. It's definitely it's not bad. It's not great. It's decent, you know? Alright, so... P16 I think does have the best horn too. I, I, I can agree with that. Aperture. Yes, P16's horde, horn is pretty nasty. It's uh, pretty good. P512's horn is pretty good too. It's definitely not P16 levels though. Yo, should we do a horn tier list? Best horn in the game? dude. Good thing I have angles. That'd be a tip city. Ooh. Now that's content. <laughs> Alright. Let's deliver this Tuz. Throw this piece of cargo back in this bed. And then deliver this cargo to the train station. There, it wasn't bad. It wasn't that hard, was it? Thank you. Oh, there's actually not a lot of cash from those, right? It's called the element of water to the train station. Yep, yeah, let's go. Kick that off. I don't need all wheel drive. Nice little lodge. What is this? Like a restaurant here or something? What is this? Is this new? Is this. Oh, lost car. Wait, what? Oh, that's that little Hummer. I'm gonna have to do that sometime. Nice little smoker sitting there. Man, I was watching some... I'm like huge on barbecue, right? You guys probably know this. I probably talk about it way too much. And I uh, was watching... I love. I do love a good brisket. I gotta say that. And 
I saw this uh, this YouTube video from a butcher. Actually, they're called the Bearded Butchers. They actually they live about an hour and fifty minutes from me, and they they get their own, they create their own spices and stuff like that. And yeah, and they were they were doing like a like a poor a poor man's burn ends. And I'm literally, I'm gonna try it sometime. I'm gonna go go get myself some some meat and do like a try to make some some burn ends, some beef burn ends. Kind of excited about it. Wait, what? Huh? What? Oh, never mind. There we go. Water can be unpre unpredictable indeed. Thank you for your help. Sweet. I am going to go get some more coffee and we will be right back. I'm going to go to the bathroom as well. So hang in there and then we're going to just, yeah, we're going to continue to just crack away at these tasks. All right, we're back. Take a good sip of this. Good. It's good coffee. All right. I'm going to pause right here and take a little sip here. While we're on the ad break. I don't know why my dead axle is spinning for. It's kind of weird. Whatever. It's cool, though. It could do that when I'm actually moving. That'd be sweet. Okay, um, lost car, first area, second area, the wooden bridge, actually, hold up, oh, long logs, wooden planks, lake paradise, is it, is it, is it, ah, oh, dude, I probably can just go do some of this. Rare vehicle delivered to the repair station. Okay. Thor's Thunder. Scan, scan, scan. Got it. Um, flatbed trailer to and the bricks, the cellulose. Got it. It's all that stuff up there. I can probably just bring a different truck for that.
Okay, so as you know what, West, I probably need to do this, these two, here, here, and then I need to go wooden planks right now. So I, th I think that's what we do. And yeah, here's the sawmill. Not gonna worry about that right now because I already have all my stuff basically crafted. So we're gonna go get two wooden planks, two metal beams. I'm going to deliver, get this waste or this uh, landfall. I'll come through this gateway here, get this landfall. Um, this here and then this here. I actually might <laughs> I might do this mission where I, I touch these areas too. We we'll go to the first area, second area. And then perhaps I grab this as well. We're going to try to string it together. But first, I must get gas. Might as well just have him repair me too. So the CT681 is getting some work today. We might switch it up and get a different truck out here. Maybe the Zix. Maybe I'll get the Zix out. You know what I'm saying? Maybe we'll... Actually, we could do that. We could switch switch this out and get the Zix going. Maybe we'll do that. Let's click this. All right, let's go. Yeah, maybe we'll get the 5-3, the 5-3, uh, wait, the Zix. One second, I need to turn on my heater. All right, 5-3-6-8, I think that's, that's, that's the, the code. Zix 5 3 6 8. That's what we'll probably pull out here. Shortly. Okay, so two metal beams, two wooden planks. Clear the passages. And we're going to need the long logs from the Paystar. Yeah, we're moving today. We're, we're definitely moving today. Yeah, he's fun, man. It's a fun truck. I'm, I'm honestly thinking about downgrading his engine, though. I'm, I'm starting to... How do I say this? I think I might downgrade his engine. <laughs> That's the thing. Um, after seeing the Voin still pull pretty good... Yeah. After seeing the Voin pull some pretty heavy cargo and get good good fuel consumption better fuel consumption than like the ta240 um yeah i don't know because i think the the 310 echo and the 5368 the zix they weigh very similar like their weights are they're pretty are pretty similar i'm pretty sure okay so we'll go this way Grab two wooden planks. I need three. Actually, I need three metal beams. Wait, do I need three metal beams? I'm, I need, I'm gonna like, I'm gonna map this out real quick because I think I need do need three metal beams for one other thing. There's one other mission I think I need metal beams for. I thought I, I realized this. Oh, two metal beams. Okay, that'll have to wait. Not not necessarily worried but worried about that right now. It's too much to bring. Too much to mess with right now. But yeah, we might we might downgrade its engine a little bit and just give it a test. 
It's a good. The, the crazy thing is because the the fuel amounts are pretty low, right, on those trucks. So you kind of want to extend their their range. And I think the TA240 is. You can still get pretty good gas mileage with it, but I don't know. How much power do I need? I guess is my question. Yo, Neeplor, welcome in. Probably just uh, slaughtered your name there, but welcome in. Let's go six CT six city. Two of these. Okay, let's go to grab two middle beams. Yeah, when we get the six, the, the Zix out, we'll check out the engine options. I'll look at the torque values. I just don't think we're going to need a whole lot of torque for, for a small truck like that. The last six, the 195, would be very similar to the Voin. Not as efficient, but similar power. Yeah, we'll take a look at it. I think the Voin is like 150. It's like 150k torque, so we'll take a look at it. Great. I love I love the damage. <laughs> Just repaired. Oops, what am I doing? Okay, two metal beams. I think I only really need two more metal beams out of this whole thing after this. Pretty much. And I haven't used any fuel out of that little Tuz right there. Or not, I mean this, uh, yeah, this Acteon. I don't think I've used any fuel out of it for uh, refilling this trailer. Actually, maybe I did. Let's see. No, I haven't. I haven't. I've, I've refueled trucks with this, but that's it. Oh. Wait, is it pumping? I need to do something. Go Tuzaktion. Attach. Attach. Uh oh. I changed trucks too fast. Yeah, it's like. All right. What I need to do is I need to do something. I'm gonna switch maps. Come back. Maybe it'll reset. We'll do this. I'll jump back into that truck. Hopefully it resets that trailer. Yeah, I, I, I was too fast on switching trucks. Yeah, if not, just back to the menu. That's my second option. After that, I'll just close the game. Reopen. There it is. We're good to go. Wait for the smoke. There we go. You know what? Hold on. I want the metal beam in my bed.
There we go. Two metal beams. Two wooden planks. One metal beam for each blockage. Wooden plank for the bridge. And then we'll do the long logs with the paystar that's already over on that map. Get over here. And then uh, after I do this, I'm going to grab the little Zix. Actually, I'll go back to the garage here in a second. We'll look at engine options for the little Zix. And then, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll have him do, I think, that one mission where I deliver that semi-trailer with the cargo and stuff like that. So, And then perhaps I'll switch him out with this truck. He'll take over of... Uh, Doing some of the, the major pulling. Okay. Let's do this. Truck storage. Okay, so check this out. <clears throat> Alright, so... Let's take a look at these engine options. I don't think those are in there. Okay. All right, so we have last six T60. Let's see what that is. Last six T60. So the Voin here is 150. The last six is 130. Saber, I have one wish for this world. It's had a six slot semi trailer. Yeah, it would make me happy too. The TA 195 might be the pick though. This is 130. 140. Yeah, I honestly I think this is I think the one four I think the one ninety five is the pick. However, I wanna see I wanna see if uh the consumption I wanna see the consumption value. Okay, here's the T sixty. What's the consumption value right now? The base four point five. No, it's not on that sheet. It's on it's on this sheet though. So here it is. 4.5 is pretty good. 4.5 is So the last TA240 is 7.5. But we're talking 185,000 torque. This actually has pretty good Pretty good critical threshold. <laughs> the TA240 is terrible. 50%, it's pretty bad. Pretty pretty bad. Okay, where's the Voin? The Voin's here. The Voin has 5.0. So this has 5.5. So it's not as good as the Voin. A little bit more torque. Not as good as the Voin. The Voin is super efficient. Let me see if there's anything better than the Voin right now as of like a actual hauling class truck. The 2300 Charlie is is 5 as well. I used to use this actually. This this engine. The 2300 Charlie, I used to use that a while ago. Man, even even the 1900 isn't isn't as uh, efficient as the Voin. That is wild. Ford CLT is, but that's that's the Ford CLT. That's crazy how efficient the Voin is. So let's go up here. 4.5 is the most efficient right now. We're going to try that. I think we're going to try that. I'm going to see if 130, 130K torque is, is enough to pull five slots. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. But no, this, is, this doesn't have... That stuff. This is just uh yeah, a sheet. And then truck rankings with power to weights and stuff like that. So yeah, that that's 
All right, cool. This window, full screen. E minus B plus, yeah, we're gonna do it. We'll throw that on there, but for now, I'm not going to do that. I'm actually gonna just continue the mission until I actually need him. So yeah, let's go. But first, I have to take a sip of coffee. I have to. That sheet ought to have the fuel consumption, the torque ratio. What do you mean? What sheet? I have I have the which which one? I showed two of them. Which one are you talking about here? One sheet was just showing showing engine sets. The other sheet was uh so like Vlad's shows power to weight. Like I don't really need the other one because I have Vlad's. So Vlad's shows all this stuff. I put this column in right here for US tons. So like Vlad's has power to weight ratios. Okay. This is probably, I wouldn't use this sheet here for power to weight anymore. I wouldn't use this one. I use this for this. This is the main reason I, I use this sheet. This is my this is my sheet. Actually, I took this. This sheet was made by someone else, and I took it. They don't. I don't think they really even update it or play the game anymore. But uh, I took it and I, I add to it, and then I basically I keep I keep track of who has who has what engine, like what's the top engine of, of in the game for engine sets. Yeah, I just kind of like categorize it like this you know top engine of each truck for torque you know as a visual and then the engine rankings this is not how to say this this is just these are approximate values these are not how do i say this these are not exact values i'm gonna say that these are more exact values is what vlad has because where's the power to weight ratio so his weights if you can see he has all these weights in here that he actually went into the files and even these small tidbits of weight he put in here so like these are very precise and even it shows um the mass with double rears so if you have the option for double rears it's uh yeah this little this little note pops out so he, he did a good job on it he did a good job. The ratio of consumption power. I don't understand what you mean by that. I don't know why you would need a ratio from like consumption to power. I think if you just understand the power and you, and you understand the, the base consumption. Yeah, I think that that's pretty much pretty much is good based upon seeing the seeing what the base consumption is. And then you just add in the 40% or the 30% value or whatever percentage of the all wheel drive penalty is. And then, yeah, there you go. Yeah, I don't know. Consumption to power. Oh, I went into the wrong, the wrong gateway. I should have went through this one. Not good. Yikes. I guess I'll just go up here and do this. Touch this bridge now that I'm here. Maybe go to this eastern landfall, pick up this, come back, pick up this scout, come this way, refuel, knock this out. Yeah, I guess that's, that's how I have to do it now. I went through the wrong, the wrong gap. Whatever.
I don't know if you want if you want to add that column, I would contact Vlad Vulcan um, on Discord and just give him the give him your thoughts on it. But I, I don't, honestly, I don't know if that's that would be a useful thing. To be honest, I think people just usually look at power, and then yeah. Honestly, man, I don't think many people even look at. People just want to know how much power it has. And not much more. I almost think I'm giving too much information on engines whenever I talk about vehicles. I mean, there's a very few amount of people that actually want to know, like, hey, what's the... What are the damage numbers? What's the consumption like? I think people just want to know an opinion of, hey, is it, is it efficient? Is it powerful? And then maybe, is it durable? But I think the durability request is very few and far between. I've never, actually, I've never heard anyone ask, is the engine durable? So, I don't know. I didn't pack these. Okay. Actually, there's another mission up here that I actually might do. I probably should do it, to be honest. Let me uh, pause this here. I think there is a mission up here. Not... Is it the lost car? First area, second, third... Okay, I have an idea. I have an idea. It's this. I think it's called first area, second, third, and then deliver the con marshal. And then well, why does it say Humber 2? I don't know. That's weird. But we're going to do this, I think. But first, I'm actually going to just drop the trailer because I'm not going to take this trailer all the way up this hill for no no apparent reason. I think it's called I think it is it efficient is answered by power consumption ratio, not base consumption. But like here here's the thing though. Here's the thing that's 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 why it's it's more tricky than just that. Like it's not as plain as that. And here's why. The Azov 64131 and the 5319. What is the main difference of those that we that we apparently know, okay? Is well the the main standout differences is tank size, efficiency, tire size, and weights, right? Okay. Now, if you look at both those trucks, they have they share the same engine, okay? Same consumption. The engine is that consumption, right? That value. However, also is that's not considered is the gearbox. That is that is literally why the 64131 has better consumption than his brother. Is because this gearbox option has zero um all-wheel drive penalty with the advanced special. So that, that's also like, that's why I think the whole consumption, the power consumption ratio thing is like, it, it doesn't, it doesn't answer the whole, the whole, I guess the whole question. So I don't know. It just, 
maybe it doesn't just boil down to like a number. I think it boils down to more or less. I think it's very, how do I say this? A lot of this stuff is very subjective. A lot of people think, how do I say this? A lot of people think, uh, you know, oh, you gotta be kidding me. A lot of people think a lot of trucks are actually like very, how do I say this? Inefficient. And I, I think I've, I've disagreed with that a lot of a lot of times, but you know, everyone to each his own, you know. Okay, where now? Where is this this scout? Where is this scout? Is it? No, it's up there. No, it's called, it's called Lost Car. Where are you at? Are you in? A rare vehicle's there. I'm gonna grab that. Oh, there it is, the Hummer. First, okay. Oh, this is gonna be a lot, man. This is gonna be a lot. I'm trying to do like multiple things here at once. Maybe I shouldn't be doing this, but I should just be delivering this cargo and then worrying about all this jazz. Maybe that's what I need to do, actually. I'm thinking. I could I could do this in one in one go. I think I just probably need to go deliver this. Wow. Yeah, I think I just need to go deliver this to this site. However, I can't get there very easily though. I have to go down. But I'd still go buy this. Maybe not. Let's go. You know what? Let's go this way. I'm gonna do this landfall over here. Or this this landslide, I think. Yeah. I messed up so bad going through the wrong gateway. Okay, then after that, I come back to the road. So we'll go here, back to the road. I think there's gas here, gas there. I can get gas at some point, or I get gas here. Bring this all the way up around. Through here, up the trail. Drop that off. <laughs> this is craziness. Continue. Oh, the Hummer's there. Continue, grab a rare vehicle, grab the Hummer, bring those back to their respected areas. Then we get the Zix. We do this movie props or whatever this is, Thor's Thunder. I don't know what it is. And then we switch vehicles. That's the plan. Let's go. Trying to do way too much. If I had a six slot trailer, maybe. But, you know what I probably just could do though? You know what I probably just could do? Is I probably could just bring him down. Bring him at least down to an area I can readily grab him. Ooh. Okay, hold on a second. I got a better idea. There we go. Let's 
Ja. So now I won't have to run all the way up that mountain to grab him. On my second go, I can just grab him, go grab the Neo Falcon, take them back to basically that area. Good to go. drop you right here. There you go. See you later. You've been in the Dawn region? I forget how much damage the terrain does there. Yeah. You mean the Dawn? The Dawn does a lot of damage? I'll turn off my heater there. It's getting too, a little bit too warm. The Dawn? Yeah. Damage in this game is very punishing. It, uh, <laughs> it can crush you. I'm actually going to repair slash refuel here. Oh, yes, the junk piles. Yes. Yes, that is that that part I've I've smashed myself on a lot actually. Man, this repair trailer is not seeing. I'm gonna have to go repair this or re up that those values. <clears throat> What's up, holes? Welcome in. So much more punishing in Mudrunner. Drive full speed at a tree, pretty much done for. Yeah, that that is true. Yes, that is true. <laughs> Haven't played it, but yes, that is true. I, I've heard that. Yeah, you smack a tree going like full speed, you're done -zo. Which I mean, realistically, it's yeah, that that checks, right? <laughs> Dario, thank you for the follow. What's my opinion on ran random damage driving fast on paved roads? I'm going to say I don't like it. But I think if you if you strike these, see these rocks right here? Like these ones here? So like, if you're going down a road and you smack one of these and you take damage, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that's that's pretty much warranted. Okay, or like these right here, like this patch of rocks. But if you're if you're just striking in like a pebble, like let's say you're just dr like there's nothing really on the road, but all of a sudden you're just taking damage. Um, yeah, I don't think I agree much with that. I don't think I'm in agreement with with random damage on on pavement roads. Like let's let's talk about uh, Tamir Drownlands right outside the right outside the garage. That road right there. Yeah, you just destroy yourself if you get any speed. It, it kind of is. <laughs> it, it is a very good example. But yeah, I'm, I'm just not a fan of just completely demolishing your... Because like, if you think about it, these tires are meant for... 
for like smashing up terrain like this, right? I'm, I'm hitting rocks right now. I'm, I'm hitting terrain. Like, I think, you know, that stuff probably would would seem like it harms more, but yeah, going down a road with hitting, hitting you know, pebble-sized things or somehow just destroying trucks. But yeah, if you hit like a rock outcropping on a road that, that's like on the side of the road for some reason, yeah, you deserve, I mean, realistically, you deserve to take damage if you smack that. Because like if, in, in real life, if, if you hit a, a, a boulder of that size, like it's going to damage your truck pretty bad, right? I think we all can agree. They have damage was coated into them, even though they appear gentle and dirt. Wow. Yeah, that's not that's not fun. Yeah, I mean like that's another thing like what Destro just said or Max just said, um You know, even even just flying in the off-road gearbox, like down trails like this, like yeah, you, you can still accumulate some some damage. I mean, if you look at any type of like wor world record runs, like especially on like the container deliveries, like those dudes are smashing their suspension almost to oblivion on that run, and they're not touch not really touching any type of pavement. It just. Uh, there we go. Let's continue. We'll send the stones to the paleontologist for research. Here's your pay. 1700, that's it? It does like one damage when you actually hit a rock. Way more when it's invisible. Yeah. Yeah, I think damage is frustrating. The only way to get away from it is just to turn damage off. Um, but then playing with no damage is just kind of feels, I guess, wrong. Is the... Oh wow, we didn't even need this downshift. Okay. I expected the downshift there. There's a patch in Flatland coming into the flooded port, the warehouse, which it... Parked a truck on so you'd stop driving it over. Wow. Oh, wow. Okay, so this goes to that other blockage. Let me see something. Is there anything down here? What's this? Okay, so the movie set. I almost want to bring that carrier out. But I can do that with this pay star whenever I go to get those logs. So I'm not too concerned actually right now. So I can grab long logs there too. <laughs> nice. It's Lake Paradise. Okay, so touch the lake. I can probably, honestly, I probably should go do this while I'm here. Maybe I will just touch that lake. I probably I think I should. I probably will. We'll do that actually. I'm gonna go like this. Pull some of these back. Ah. Uh, sure. I guess I'll just go this way. I feel like there should have been more some more missions over here. It's actually kind of like a, a pretty cool zone to take through, but there's not really much back here. I forget what's back here, though. I don't know if there's anything that goes back there. But yeah. After that, come back out here, get gas. Up here. Boom, boom. Unlock that. Then I need to probably drive to... Actually... 
I'll drive to this. Whoa, this is going to be cool. So we'll go like this. Actually, it's going to be a pretty sweet drive. We'll go like this. Whoa. Touch that, turn around, come up here, grab the rare vehicle, which is the Neo Falcon. Come out this way, grab the Hummer, throw the Hummer in the bed, and then I believe these cars go here at some or something. It's a pretty pretty long area, but this should this should not gonna take long, I don't think. Should be pretty quick. I just want to get into my the Zix, man. I want to. I want to see if that engine is is super efficient. Yikes! Turn. You know, I think I am excited for uh, back to, how do I say this, back to like the two map regions. Just a much more manageable. The missions aren't just like crazy, or the missions aren't like, how do I say this, there's not a hundred of them, like the four maps. Logistics are a little bit easy. Whoa, dude. Are you kidding? Are we kidding right now? This is really super mud. Are, are, are we serious? Is this, is this real life right now? Do I have to like row, row, row my boat here? Is this... Definitely blue. Kind of. We were kind of stuck there. I don't know what that was. It's definitely... It's got that bluish. I don't know if I want to re return that way. Felt like the Immors now, right? You wouldn't mind another one map region? Dawn is too small? Yeah. Dawn has, it definitely is, is a very small region. Very puzzle-like. It is dense. Yeah, it is dense. What's the thing I would add to SnowRunner if you work for Saber? Yikes, dude. That is a, that is a very good question. There's a lot of things I would add. Uh... Off the top of my head, since the new game Expeditions is out, I'd probably say the push-pull winch. I'd probably say the push-pull winch.
sub torpedo the push pull winch i mean there's a lot of things i would add to be honest i mean i, I could talk about like there's some things i would take away i think from from different trucks and stuff like that but i think for the sake of balance one second y'all Okay, we're back. Oh, it's like this, this. Uh, I team up probably. I would say I would I would remove a lot of uh, a lot of attachments from heavy trucks actually. I definitely would. I definitely would. I think the push pull winch thing is, is a good is a good addition just across the board. Which is allowing to like let your let's give give slack in your winch whenever you're connected to something, right? So you would have the ability to kinda of like repel down stuff if you were a scout. Same thing if you were a larger truck, but your I know your engine would probably go if you got to a certain angle, right? But yeah, I think that the push pull winch is, is definitely one of them. Removing a few add-ons, I think uh, how do I say this? I would. Here's a good. Here's a good topic. Is this region right here? This region right here has upgrades for existing trucks that have been in the game, like uh, the dairy, the dairy forty five twenty, also the Dan. Then also it has for the Transstar. I would make those upgrades. Um. I wouldn't make those found upgrades on this DLC. I would make them level unlocks. Like there's no reason the Transstar needs to go to season six to get a to get an upgrade for suspension. You'd remove the AMD graphic glitch. I don't even know what that is, but I think that's more that's more or less like that's like fixing. I don't say this. That's like that's like a like a bug fix, I guess. I'm just talking about like features or stuff or just things in the game, trucks in the game. You would kill for a push pull winch. I mean, they basically have it, right? I mean, the crane, the crane operates that way. The crane the crane it essentially is a push pull winch. So, I mean, I think realistically Maybe it could be added to like trucks themselves. I don't know. Probably giving some trucks uh, a little bit more power. Um, I'm looking at the, the Pacific P12, P16. Those are probably my primary focus. I'd probably say the Freightliner 114SD should probably get a power bump in some way. Maybe give it the ability to, I don't know, have an engine that's shared with, I don't know, I would say even giving it the ability to have one of the highway trucks engines like the Transtar or shoot, even the CLT that would be a that would be a massive bump, right? 160, 165-ish. The 5070, I don't know. Actually, I don't think I would cuz it's because the 5070 what we talked about the other day. Actually, I'm going to agree. Actually, Scorpio, I'm going to agree. Yeah, I think the 5070 should get more power, but the thing is I think the 5070 already pulls as if it has more power just because it's tire options. If if the theory is correct, okay, if the theory is correct. This is a nice little pull up this hill. Needs a tad better range. Yeah, it probably does. 
Yeah, it probably does. I think it just, it, it definitely eats up too much fuel to be a, a long range puller without having consistent support. So, yeah, I, yeah, I think I'd probably make it more efficient. I think that would probably be my move if, if the, how do I say this? If the, if I got, if, if I worked there and the pushback to give it more power was too present, I would say, okay, let's make it a little bit more efficient then. Let's nerf its consumption just a tad. Roof racks for old trucks, maybe. But then again, I think roof racks for old trucks, to be honest, I think roof racks, how do I say this? If you look at Pavel's, Pavel's writing on, um, when they did an interview with him, the way he described how the truck should be, none of that mentioned like roof racks on vehicles. But he's kind of out of the picture, so. I think now it's the cat's kind of out of the bag, right? With uh, with roof racks, so you probably could just say, yeah, you could add roof racks for all existing trucks. Which is kind of sad if, if Pavel's like completely out of the picture and not a consultant anymore. There we go. This is this is that good stuff right here. This is how maps should be. Give more of this, less of just mud. Where you know, you're pulling loads up through the mountains, passes. That stuff seems way more sketch than... Only scouts should have them. I don't know. It's, it's, it's a... I don't know, man. It's kind of hard. It's hard to, to balance all this stuff because I feel like there would be... a just a bunch of people complaining that there's no roof racks in the game, period, or scouts just have them. And I don't know. It's tough. Lower tier trucks to make them a little bit more relevant. Then people would cry favoritism. You see what I'm saying? There's always, I don't know. It, it's tough. It's a tough question, man. It's a very tough question. Yikes. Oh, big yikes. the row 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 my boat here this is probably this is definitely a spot that dead axles kind of hurt me right now it's definitely it's rubbing what is going on you can see it's either that or that box is rubbing. There we go. There we go. I'm out. I'm good. You fell in love with it, Dan, after driving it with the, the active suspension? It is probably one of the more underrated trucks, yeah. I do have experience with it, yeah. Yeah, I do have experience with it. So my review on the Dan actually doesn't have the active suspension in the review, but yes, I have made a video on the upgrades to like the existing trucks from season six. 
The Dan's upgrade for the active suspension is absolutely incredible. Start tracking. Wait, what? Oh, it goes there? Okay. Hmm, this seems like a trap. Yes, this is a trap. This is a trap. All my load is gonna go to my left or it's going to dip to my right and I'm going to not be able to have any angle to keep my balance there and then I'm going to tip over. We've seen this. We've seen this. That's not the move. I'll go through this stuff just to, just to not tip over. Or I could have used the, uh, the counterbalance move where I take the cargo out, swing it over to my left hand side, traverse the area. I could have done that. So that's also an option. How many hours do I have in SnowRunner? I think I'm at 40, 40, 4,250 actually right now, I think. Probably after today, it'll be around like almost 40 to 4260. So yeah, a lot. <laughs> There's a lot of hours. Lots of hours. Okay, cool. That's done. Let's continue. Yeah, a lot of hours, man. Started playing in 2020. It's it, it's been a long road. <laughs> There's a lot of SnowRunner. Alone or co-op? I would say mostly alone. I have played co-op with a few friends um, here and there, but yeah, the state of co-op is just not good. Period. So. See, it's crazy, man. People are like, man, season 11 is so easy. But like, really, if if you play like mid-tier trucks, it's yeah. Well, there's the refueling bug. There's the kick you out of the game bug. All those things. And also timing. Just timing doesn't line up with, uh, with a lot of those guys. So... But yeah, another thing is like playing co-op. If I play co-op with, with someone on this playthrough, I'm not touching every mission in the game. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, I, I don't think I could say I beat a game if, if someone else has done a mission for me. Does that make sense? Like, if someone gets on my game and then they just start completing missions everywhere, like, I can't say that I've completed the game 100%. And, and be speaking truth, because I did not touch every mission myself. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, you can always go in their map. Yeah, I know that. That's true. It's just, I play, how do I say this? Also, so I have my normal my normal playthrough, my hard mode playthrough, which is this one. Which is uh, 11 seasons complete so far. Or about to be 11 seasons complete. And then, you know, that time. And then also, like, making videos and stuff like that. Yeah, there's not much time for for anything else, to be quite honest. This is actually a pretty cool route. I like this a lot. This is this is this is how they need to continue making maps. This is like real this is what difficulty should be. Not super mud. This is this is actually like making you think here. Dead axle is is killing me right now. That's where it's okay. Cool. Uh, should I? I'll just push this forward. My opinion on expeditions. I actually made a review on it. Actually, if you want to check it out, and then um, I actually gave my opinions on the uh, on my final stream. So. 
you can check that out too as well if you want to but but it, essentially I, I I don't I'm not a fan of it just bump up can I bump up the front end here a little bit to get a little bump <laughs> okay never mind could just completely destroy ourselves <laughs> that'll work too Oh, you've seen it already? Okay, nice. Am I st planning to start New Game Plus after hard mode? No. No. I mean, I've also... I mean... New Game Plus for me is... It was the randomizer. And I... Yeah. To be honest, I... I kind of have been thinking about... Like, ending... Like, playing hard mode period after Season 12. I don't know. It's just, how do I say, it's just another, I feel like I'm just playing the same thing over and over and over again, which is okay, I guess. But I mean, but then again, I don't know. What's up, Implicit? Welcome in. I, you know, I don't think I was hype, Muffna. I was, I think, I was, I was wanting to be excited for it. I was, I guess, I was trying to be optimistic for it. Do you know what I'm saying? Because I think when I when I heard of it coming out, like, you know, it's on the same engine. I kind of didn't know what to expect. I wanted to, with what was being told to me by people who have seen like early access, like very early access, um. Yeah, it looked... I, I was hopeful. Yeah, but the thing is, Derek, I don't think low payment... Low payment and low XP... You can't get low XP, by the way. Low XP is not a slider. If, if low XP was a slider, I would do it. So you can't actually alter that. It's not a slider. Low, low payouts is not really fun for me. Like, how do I say this? I'm gonna, if, if, if I did low payouts, I would effectively just play the game just like I played hard mode the first time through. I would be hyper... Hyper, um... And I'd probably play... To be quite honest, I'd probably... It'd be a very boring playthrough to watch. I would only play super efficient trucks because my, my payouts are very low. I would be very... Cheesy about cheesing the game with just, uh grabbing fuel free fuel from around the map that's that's essentially what i would be doing right so like for my opinion i don't think i never thought that hard mode was hard is that does that make sense It's something so chill playing snowrunner but then again if you play it too long it becomes a bit stale yeah that's why i have you know i've had multiple playthroughs that's why i've i've done a, a randomizer and stuff like that which which kind of gave me a huge challenge right that was probably the biggest challenge i've, I've faced with snowrunner and that was on the base game the base maps right you couldn't stand not being able to change time in hard mode yeah, that is kind of rough. I agree, Torpedo. That That is kind of rough. <laughs> so you have to make time to pause for a month or so? Yeah, I mean, I think... I'm not going to... That's why like, I think I might stop playing hard mode. I don't know if I'm going to stop playing hard mode. I would say this. I don't know. It's going to depend on how the year four pass feels playing normal like but also i like playing normal mode on stream because like i can take truck requests from you guys so if you say like hey like can i see you use this truck or can we use this truck i can just port back to the garage and do it like in hard mode i really can't do that i mean we've i've taken truck requests and we've bought trucks just because like yeah i'm just messing around i don't really care about money on this right now because yeah hard modes whatever but yeah, I don't know.
I don't think they've changed anything about NG+. Am I going to continue that Druid playthrough on D2 I started last week? I think I might. If I don't continue that one, I might I might start a Paladin. So, Or, I mean, I'm also going to play... Oh, where is this at? I'm also going to probably play some World of Warships, stuff like that. I will play Manor Lords when it comes out. So, that's another... Oh, there's, there's the actual... You know what, dude? I need fuel so bad. My stuff is wrecked. You put it on daytime all the time? I used to be like that. I used to always have daytime on. Some dishes and vacuum the floor, do other chores. <laughs> yeah, man, we're gonna be playing some other things in the stream. <clears throat> Snowrunner is still gonna be here. It's not going anywhere. It's just I'm I'm think I think I'm gonna slow down on like how much I'm like smashing hours into this game. And just like start to enjoy some other games too. Cause like, I think I'm at the point where when a vehicle comes out, I'm I think I'm gonna be able to how to say this? I'm gonna be able to like review a truck pretty easily, and I don't. I think like with reviews, I need to figure out a better way to to convey my thoughts in a unform, informal fashion too, as well. But we'll see. Those are all things I need to consider. Can we get a turn here, Mister? serious right now here we go can I pack this nice sorry cool oh did that kit nice You spent a solid 30 minutes fishing the trailer <laughs> out of the water and then flipping it to mad. Oh, man. So, you know, if you close the game from the taskbar and reload, it puts you back to your last save. So it's technically cheating, but useful when... Yeah, if you'd like Alt F4. Yeah, I know that, but I, I don't think I've ever done that. I just kind of take it on the chin. I just kind of, if I mess up, I mess up, I guess. Does this have gas? Hold on a second. Oh, two gallons is it? You've done, I mean, if you, if you've done it, like, I understand. Trust me, I understand. I'm not, I'm not shaming anybody for doing it. It's an exploit. The game takes too long. Listen to me. Like, here's the thing. Like, the game takes forever to play. So if you can do an exploit that'll save you an hour of, of pain, I'm totally like, what? Whoa, dude. There's a stump right there. Like, that's totally okay. Like, I think I'm getting to the point in, in my SnowRunner journey where I, I just, I genuinely do think the game is, is very, is very long. Eighteen gallons. Can I make it back with eighteen gallons? I'm almost out. I might be. I'm almost out of here. Totally. So I need to pick up the Hummer.
Yeah, we're out. Nice. Good go. There's my Hummer. Wait a second, where, do, where does this go? Where does the, uh... What is it called? Rare vehicle? That goes there. Hummer goes there. Okay, cool. Alright, nice. Okay, cool. That's crazy, Torpedo. People will go to some crazy lengths, right? <laughs> to not have to deal with their mistakes. It's crazy. Whoa, just chill, just chill. Just chill, just chill, we're okay. We're okay, Mr. Mr. Hummer. Just, just chill. It's kind of rough, actually. So he doesn't, he doesn't want to go. Just pull in. Can I get? Can I just get you to like turn? Just don't want to. You don't want to act right, right? Wait, what, what are you doing? <laughs> oh, gotcha. Jackknife, jackknife, jackknife. That's true. Now do that with a Russian crane? Oh man, could you imagine? Okay, cool, I'm almost, I'm almost there. Could you imagine? I mean, how do I say this? Uh, I mean, there's like a spectrum. Like you got to think about this. Like the, the from the player base, there's a spectrum, right? And I think it goes from like people that just inherently enjoy mods, like you know, what I'm saying like the most OP mods to to just have fun, I guess, right? And then to the people who are more hardcore and are more no mods, you know, these crazy challenges, stuff like that, right? Essentially. Oh my, this thing is out. And I think it's like every play, like people just fall all along the spectrum. Oh, I need to get gas. Just steal out of his tank, whatever. So like, I don't know, there's a spectrum of folks that, they, you know, I do respect the, hey, if you enjoy the game, playing mods, play mods. Um, I, I don't know. I probably fall on the opposite side of, of the spectrum of like no mods type stuff, so. New truck. Nice. I'll go like this. Let's go unpack. Okay, so the Falcon. Oh, gosh. No. The upgrade randomizer is a mod, yes. But it's played, it's played with... Uh, I'm talking modded trucks. <laughs> v 
Very cute there, Max. Very cute. I see what you're doing there. But yeah, the upgrade randomizer is a, is a mod, yes. That and the XP slider is a mod. So, but those are those are used to, yeah, create a, create a challenge, I guess. You know, I knew someone was going to say that. I absolutely knew someone was going to say something like that. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of with you, Torpedo. I, I don't think uh, using mods to smash the game is, is, is a fun thing. I, I don't know. I mean, to each his own, but... For me, that's not that's not a fun thing. I think there's a lot of enjoyment to ha be had with challenge, I guess. Oh, I didn't pack you down. Whatever. The absolute pulling power of the Mastodon? Yeah, it does a pretty good job at it. Yeah, it didn't take long, Victor. I, I mean, I, I mean, like, I think day one there was like seven. There was like seven mods, right? Okay, so thanks for the help. Thanks for help. At least no one got hurt. Here's your reward. Okay, so that was a pretty good run uh, on those ones. Next, I actually want to do this. Look, guys, we have a Voron AE. A free Voron AE. What's up, Havix? Welcome in. Welcome in, Solo. I figure I'll eventually get into the mods after I beat SnowRunner. I still need to buy year two, three DLCs. And you have yet to beat any map yet? No worries, man. Honestly, I think that I think the 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 vanilla trucks are str are, are they're strong enough. <laughs> they're strong enough. I, I absolutely can one hundred say that. Mods are necessary. The game is buggy enough as it is. <laughs> The marshal with the identity crisis. Oh gosh. Yeah, I think if I finished it and I decided to run around with mods, then yeah. But I mean, hey, if you want to use mods, use mods. I'm not, I'm not shaming anybody for for doing so. You play the game how you want. Um, I definitely have. Um, I've talked to a lot of people. I think I've turned a lot of people's focus or their heads or their, their perspective to trying out, yo, con forever. Thank you for the follow as well. I kind of missed you there. Um, for trying out just playing vanilla. And I've gotten a lot of comments of people saying like, Hey man, I didn't play this way. I played this way and now I'm playing this way. And I want to thank you. Like, I mean, my, my YouTube comments are riddled with things like that. <laughs> So, okay, so we're gonna do a little experiment here. I'm gonna drop this engine to 130,000 torque because I want this fuel consumption. I wanna see if I can still handle, if, I wanna see if the fuel consumption is, is a lot better. I wonder though if the engine's gonna be too stressed and its consumption is not really gonna matter if it's just pulling as hard as it can all the time. But uh, I'm gonna take a break from the Laz TA240 at 185,000 torque. We're gonna jump down here to 130. Here, I'll, I'll kind of explain this here. Let me pull up this number. Uh, yeah, here we go. Okay, so where's the Laz TA240 at? So here's the Laz TA240, right? <laughs> So we have 185,000 torque, 7.5 consumption value. Um, so we talked about the Voin engine with the Step 310 Echo. I actually switched over to the Voin just to get better consumption, right? TA240, it also has that great power. However, for this map, I don't think I really need too much power. So this is one of the more efficient engines for a hauling class truck. However, this one's pretty efficient, but I'm wondering if 130,000 is going to be enough torque. We will see. <laughs> you tried up one of the files, a mod in, in Expeditions that unlocks everything. Wow. Yo, what's up, CA Bulldozer? What's up, Albert? Welcome in. All right, let's do this then. 
let's do this. So, kind of want to. No, I'm, I'm leaving the UODs on. Yeah, we're leaving UODs on. Can you explain why the P12 feels so much less powerful than the P16? Even the same engine, same weight. Um, I think they both feel, they both feel pretty underwhelming in power. The P12 is not a good, good truck. It's a shame. I actually think the P12 is great. I mean, if you think about it, when the P12 came out, it was a heavy class truck that had add-ons that, how do I say this? That not a lot of heavy trucks have, or in my opinion, should have. So people will complain about its power, right? But I have a video showing how you can actually effectively not increase its power, but you can increase its pulling capacity. And if you want, we can I can show you that video and kind of walk you through it. But I think the P12 is excellent. The only thing is, yes, it is power starved. It is power starved. Um, that actually... Havoc was one of my first trucks I bought on hard mode. And when I bought it and YouTube found out about it and then the people on stream found out about it, they were raving. They were like, why would you buy the P12 of all, of all trucks? It's terrible. And it's been, honestly, the P12 has been a, kind of a staple of my fleet. But to be honest, I feel like in every playthrough, hard mode or normal, I always reach for the P12. And it's not because... I'm trying to like flex my muscles like hey I can use a underpower truck it's more or less because like I really appreciate it but yes power it's outclassed it has I mean let's see here it has let's go display okay so like power to weight let's see power to weight ratios this truck used to be the lowest right here until it got this engine here, right? But now the Pacific P12 and P16, the P16 actually has a lower power to weight ratio, but these are the king of literally struggling with power. They are the, they are literally the lowest on this whole list. And yeah, I think they need a bump. I do. I absolutely agree. They, they should get like a, I think a 230, a 230 bump would be, would be pretty good. I mean, that's the thing. I like, I think it's good. I think it's one of the best crane trucks you can have, to be quite honest. Like the P12 as a crane truck, support truck, even honestly, even a logger, I like it. But like if you're planning on moving mass amounts of cargo with it, yeah, it's going to struggle. But I mean, I mean, you'll see it like riddled across my, my YouTube videos. I mean, I'm always, even in like hard mode, I'm always using the P12. It hasn't come out here because like, I don't know. Actually, no, it has. It's out. <laughs> yeah, it's out. <laughs> it's out for here. I was just hauling a, a special mission trailer with it. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. I try to make use of it. Okay, let's see how good this consumption is with this, this engine here. There's my step. Don't forget about the... Yeah, I know about the special tires. But also, that's another thing. The special tires, they dig in so much that that's why another reason why you have power struggles, right? All right. <clears throat> you guys ready for some... Uh, since we're talking about this, P12 is great. Kenny's better than P12, big crane. Guess it's not that fair, though. Well, no, you're right. So the P16, here's the thing about the special tires. They're irrelevant. Well, they're no, they're not irrelevant. I think for pulling or for just overall off-roading, they're great. Okay. But if you're talking about like pulling up a hill, like if you know you're going to pull up a hill, you're going to have axle freeze and you know you're using the P16, you probably could downgrade its tires and actually allow yourself to spin. So let's see, where's P16 at? We can test this real quick. Let's test this real quick. Oh, okay. P16, 210,000 torque. I'm going to roll special. 
we'll just go advanced to whatever. I'll put this advanced special on. So you could downgrade the Jats, but we're gonna see. Let's go info so I can get some. It does, it has the Jat tire options. Um, we'll see how far this gets with this trailer. I don't know. I don't know how this is as far as it's going to get. Well, we'll see. <clears throat> Honestly, I think that I don't think the Jats are really needed. The only thing I think the Jats are needed for, to be quite honest, is if you need lateral stability a little bit more buoyancy and then also for scout some some most 4x4 scouts i think the jats are pretty pretty sweet all right so i'm gonna hit this slope i'm gonna go low plus switch down to low when it hits like 2.0 and then yeah we're, we're, we're probably gonna freeze pre shift see it already like it can't even there's no there's nothing saving it yeah nothing saving it all right so next test yeah the bandit dual rears yeah that, that's actually a, a pretty good one too and also and also there's a what's it called what's up carsey welcome in thank you for that raid also the warthog as well. All right, so let's just uh, let's, let's get this map reset. I'll put the jats on, and we'll see uh, if it goes any farther. But just for everyone's, just to let everyone know, the paystar with one hundred and fifty thousand torque pulled that hill. So. Which, I'm not going to make a, a video on my theory of that, but, yeah. Every time you deploy the Warthog, I regret selling it again. I don't know, the Warthog's tough, man, because it's just too light in its front end. It, it doesn't have any weight in its, in its rear, or its front, to keep it down. Alright, cool, let's go. Same thing. Less grippy tires. Let's see if I can get farther. Okay, it got farther, okay. Yeah, got farther. I definitely got farther. I think probably the more... How do I say this? I'm guessing... The better test would be with the 5 slot. Better test would be with the 5 slot. Yeah. I think 5 slot and then seeing how far it crawls up with the regulars, with the, with the Jats. Probably a better one, but... I'm not going to take a whole lot of time doing testing. I'm trying to advance this hard mode. <laughs> so. Those tires do look kind of weird. They do, right? You know, it also looks weird. The Look at the map. Look at the loading screen of Drummond Island and then look at the P16's tires. Let me let me know what you think about those. The P16 having ATHS tires on the on that. It's kind of funny. All right, cool, let's go.
I love this truck, man. How's trucking going? It's going good, man. Thank you for that raid. Appreciate it, man. How was your, how was your stream? We're just testing out the, uh, the weakest engine on this truck right now. I'm trying to see how good it's, it's fuel consumption can get to and if it's going to struggle with power at all. So that's kind of the, kind of what's on the chopping block today, I guess. Watching Trailmaster, you love to see the supercharged tow truck in SnowRunner. I mean, <clears throat> they probably could do something like that. All right, so this is the correct gateway for the, to go through on this side now. Now, we're talking. gearbox graph You're talking about the one uh referring to like pavel's original original code for for gearbox yeah that 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 stuff that uh that information is definitely um super useful i think it kind of it changes the way you look at gears right i think i made a couple of those videos actually i think i made three to be quite honest so let's see movie is it Thor's Thunder? No, it's not Thor's Thunder. I think it's this. Yeah. Bricks of cellulose, all that jazz. Start tracking. All right, cool. Let's go. Grab this. Uh, grab all this stuff. Get it out of here. You're playing around in expeditions. Nice, man. Oh, you're on free. You were doing free realm. Nice. Oh, so you're doing Carpathian then. Okay, nice, dude. Glad you had a good stream. Yeah. So auto auto is essentially low plus. Basically, that's kind of what auto is. Oh, the Carpathians are beautiful, man. That definitely was a very beautiful map. Yes, very beautiful map. I, I thoroughly enjoyed how how scenic that was. I think I enjoyed the, the viewing on Carpathian much better than Arizona. Even though, like, I can't say I'm, I'm an Arizona native. I, uh, I lived in Arizona for like three years, so I definitely... Thought it was really cool to see. You're actually playing that beautiful view task. Nice. The upgrade parts make it look chunky. Oh, you mean like in in expeditions? I think what happens, havoc is is it's all refunded to you when you recover back. 
I'm not mistaken, whenever you come back to the garage, they sell it all off for you. Like, whatever you don't use, they sell off. I, I don't know, but I... I can't... I don't know, maybe... They're probably... You probably know a little bit more than me, because I kind of quit playing there after a while, but... Yeah. Actually, I need to go like this. You know what the crazy thing is? I remember doing the same mission, I think, with the same truck. <laughs> and I think some bad stuff happened. Wow, I flipped, I flipped both things over? Okay, that's cool. You get a percentage back? Okay. Or you can leave them in the storage. Okay. Oh, you think free should be free? Okay, I gotcha. Yikes, dude. Will you flip over? Let's do this then. Go like this. Extend. So it kind of pulls you back, I guess. I guess. Oh, the legs are caught up. That's what's happening right now. Let's get this in line here. Not gonna play around. I'm trying to do some MacGyvering and it's not gonna work. <clears throat> okay, that should be good. Okay. So now we do a little backup here. Yep, just like so. Have the fixed stutters? I don't know about the stutters. Honestly, I don't know. I'm I'm guessing you're talking about expeditions. So I, I definitely wouldn't know.
Okay. Probably should turn off all wheel drive. That's actually something you should do. Is when you're doing crane stuff. See how the consumption went down? But honestly, my consumption wasn't bad, but 40% is 40%. Well, that's with like an off road gearbox, though. You know, I've been hearing a lot of bad things about about consoles. To be honest, I've been hearing a, bad, a lot of bad things about console and SnowRunner and Expeditions for so long. It, it's like it, it's it's like the never-ending. It really is like the never-ending terrible thing with console and SnowRunner and and, and Expeditions. I don't know. You never use the Scout off-road gearbox. It's just 80% is too much. 80% is a lot. Solo, it's running great. It's good. <clears throat> okay, I need to actually activate this. What is it called? Movie props. Okay, nice. Take this all back. Okay, let's see what this consumption's like. So 3.4 was the highest I've seen right there. Doesn't feel too bad, 3.0. You actually prefer running slow, solo? I kind of do too, a little bit. For SnowRunner, I don't know. I definitely would like to, I think, I would like to progress with somebody, but the thing is, man, like, it's just too, it's too long of a game to, to line up times to play. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, it's too long. It's just, yeah. Trying to line up, you know, time to play with your friends and, and like get this game done in like a, wow, actually you can feel the power there. Or the power struggle, I guess. Okay. I wish I had daylight, man. I could see like actual tires spinning. It is built for solo. It is absolutely built for solo. But yeah, I think I don't know many people, to be honest. I don't know anybody who has played SnowRunner in, in entirety, 100% with a friend. I don't know how you just line that up and have like a normal, a normal life. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? It is, it's a lot of work. That's a lot of coordination. And I actually, I feel bad and I, I think I feel bad for the person who, who is playing as the guest. Cause like they just, they don't have a game, a game file basically. Okay, I don't know about this engine actually, because like, watch, I'm gonna show you. I can see it kind of stuttering. Yeah, I can see it kind of stuttering here, watch. Yeah, look at the stuttering. It, it's definitely struggling, but I mean, the consumption isn't bad, but you can feel it struggling, like 3.6. Maybe the next engine up is the best choice, I don't know. One player, one, one friend you know runs with gods, mods, and you don't. Okay. It's fun as a group if you can manage to get time set, but unfortunately, multiplayer is in your only work. One person's map. Yeah, that's that's kind of why I wish uh, multiplayer was something you advanced together. 
Like, if you plan on playing multiplayer, like, I don't know. This is the lowest engine, yeah. Lowest engine. So this is 130,000 torque right now. So it's it's definitely more efficient, but man, I, I mean, I can feel it a little bit with power. But it's not too bad. Yeah, public multiplayer is pretty nice. I've done that a couple times. I know there was a stent there that a friend was telling me that people would join your game in multiplayer and then try to like wreck your stuff. They would they would try to ruin your game and stuff like that. That's pretty messed up, I thought. Funny, but messed up. It, it, well, it feels, it just feels like when I'm going up hills and I have like an abundance of grip, I'm seeing the stutter. Like I'm feeling that, I'm feeling its struggle. So I don't know. I, I don't think going as extreme as like the, what's it called? The T90 engine or whatever this was. You probably can go like with the one step up and be fine. Or just use the TA-240 and not have to worry about it at all. Oh, that's it right there. It's the turn. Oh, nice. I get a free flatbed semi-trailer. How nice. How nice of you. The wooden bridge. Oh, that's right. Paystar. Let's go. Hmm. I don't have enough fuel for this. I love semi-trailers. I do. I do. All right, you know what? Hold on a second. Let's take a look at this again. Oh, the beautiful morning. Okay. Gas, logs, Boom, up to the wooden bridge. Wait, who doesn't love semi-trailers here? Whoa. I don't have semi-trailer enjoyers. <clears throat> um, I wonder if I can get down here, get logs and get back. I'm gonna try it. Yeah, I'm gonna try it. I think I can. 20 some gallons, 23 gallons, I'm gonna try it. I'm pretty sure I can. There's no way I take a third of a gallon, a third of a tank just to get logs and back on the paved road. You thought I was being sarcastic about that? Oh yeah. I don't like I don't really like flatbeds too much though, but I'll take it. I mean I'll take it. It's another another uh another truck to push the mish, you know what I'm saying? The only time you use pull trailers is when I have it on hard mode. Wait, what? What do you mean by pool trailers?
Wait, this is... I can get logs at the sawmill? Beautiful. Beautiful. Lovely. Hitch trailers? Oh, okay. <clears throat> Only flatbeds, no cranes. Gotta save on that weight. That's one way to do it. No, they don't. I think I think uh, sideboards weigh more. <clears throat> I think the sideboard semi weighs more than the flatbed. And then they, I think they both weigh more than the uh, the step deck for some reason. So. Yeah, the the crane is definitely an addition. But I I honestly think the crane is invaluable. I mean, earlier this stream, I just I kind of showed why having the crane is is super valuable. Like we tipped over with a load, I deployed the crane, and it literally just saved my whole. It saved me from you know bringing another truck out to uh, to get me. Like the use of the crane, to me, anymore. Like if I'm gonna bring a crane. <laughs> Am I running out of gas or something? What's going on? Let's go. Actually, I'm at 16%. Yeah, we're going to go this way. Should be able to make it to this other little fuel spot. <clears throat> Let's go. Oh, yikes. Am I going to make it? Are you at trailer? Yeah, I agree. I agree. There's sometimes when you have a sideboard that you're uh, you save your cargo <clears throat> from spilling out whenever you kind of like upset yourself, but you still keep your engine. Yeah, your cargo doesn't sometimes slide off and stuff like that. You don't have to do all that crap. Which is nice. It's, it's, a, it's a perk for sure. That's why I like, yeah, I like sideboard semi. I do like a step deck though. I, I, I can't I can say I do like step deck for just the purpose of putting like a scout or, I don't know, 
a scout fuel trailer on top of the step deck just for uh, just for extra range. But yeah, I like both. This map is crazy, man. You can take this road and just fast travel right across the map. I kind of honestly, I think a lot of people complain about it, but I like it. Definitely can speed things up. Step 310 Echo puts a step in your step deck. <laughs> a little skosh there. Just a little sketchy. Actually, you know what? I need to, I need to do something. I need to actually put this on here. Wooden bridge. There we go. There we go. Can I hold high gear up this hill? Star, long logs. I don't know if the cabin protector does. I don't know. That's a good question. I I don't know. I don't know the answer to that, Anox. Wow, dude. High gear. The heaviest single cargo load in the game right now. Pretty legit. Even though I might stall out here, actually. This might be it right here, where it stalls out. Yes, it is. But pretty good. Pretty good pull for 150,000 torque. I think I'm hitting. I might be hitting, actually. So I could. Oh, here we go. Here's where they want you to tip over right here. Kind of. All right. And we have a bridge. Boom, 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 boom. Just like that. 
There's a bridge. Sweet, so two left. Pairs to the station. Sweet. I will leave these last two for next time. After that, we'll do these contests. Um, and then after that, it's it's legitimately just pushing out contracts. These will probably take some time though. I'm guessing two, this might be a two stream to finish. So I think that's, we're at what, 78%? We need 16 left, 16 missions left. Yeah. So that is it for today, guys. I appreciate y'all stopping in, hanging out. I appreciate that raid from Carsey. Thank you guys. I appreciate all the follows from, uh, man, let's see. We got Hot Can, Mr. Three Mill, uh, Cape Lore, Dario, Con Forever. Appreciate it, guys. So yeah, we should be back tomorrow, Thursday, same time, same place. I'm going to try and finish this whole region. Let's see, by Friday. Um, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. We'll see how fast I can finish it, but I'm not going to really try to speed forward, but I, I think we could probably push out 16 missions in, in two days. So anyways, guys, you take care. Have a wonderful Wednesday. Go be a blessing to someone today. Uh, God bless you all. And as always stay upright. We'll see you.